Last evening, the lights were switched on for the first time at the Adelaide Oval, and it really was a treat. I think everyone here enjoyed it immensely, and the television audience saw those wonderful pictures, would have been uh, very keen to come down to the ground. This is the scene today. Just have a look at that. It's a, it's a wonderful career ground, this one. Uh, that uh, scenery all around the ground, and uh, the ground itself, one of the top spots to play cricket anywhere in the world. Well, the crowds are pouring in. The uh, queues outside and their cars stacked up as well. And they're all coming in to try and find their way to their favourite seats. And, of course, there are lots of nice spots to sit in this ground. Let's just start over here at the members' section. Uh, a lot of the uh, older establishment families, no doubt, members of this, uh, this place, and they sit in that area down there. They've, they've quite a lot of them have been here for quite a long time now. Moving across to the hill, it's really lovely. That's the dry area here, and that was the first section of the ground filled today. That's a sign of the times, isn't it? And over there, the hill just in front of the scoreboard, that's a lovely scoreboard. The bar is underneath the scoreboard there, and that area is absolutely packed. They're standing in front of the bar. Some shade has been introduced there with the lovely cathedral in the background. And then as we move around this new stand, that'll be the last one to fill up because, in fact, those are pre-sold tickets. That stand just in front of the Victor Richardson gates. And then we move around to Family Hill, one of the favourite spots here in Adelaide. More shade has been introduced into that area. And, of course, uh, lots of deck chairs and uh, rugs and things up there. I'm sure they're going to have a lovely time. And that wonderful Sir Donald Bradman stand and some really good seats up there right behind the bowler's arm. It's a good place to watch the cricket from. So we're in for some good cricket today. This uh, place is going to be full, we think, not since 1981. It was Australia Day has this ground been sold out. May just happen today. The pitch, well, it looks to me to be very good. It was good yesterday. It's the same pitch being used again. And uh, I've got no reason to believe that it won't play very well indeed. Just a little bit drier, I suppose. But the ball came onto the bat and there was some nice bounce there as well. Now, let's have a look at our... Telstra weather wall. There it is. The current temperature at the moment is on, well, it's around about 24. They're forecasting 24, so we've got there already. Out here in the centre, it's around about 30, so it's warm. Humidity's on 46. The light, very good on 41. The pitch, as I said, is dry. A little bit of a breeze keeping things relatively comfortable from the southeast, gusting at times up to about 15 kilometres an hour. And the player comfort at the moment, well, it, uh, it seems pretty comfortable to me, sort of erring on the, on the warm side. The UV is very high. Everyone will be searching for a hat and for a bit of shade, I should think. It's wonderful in the centre, and we're in for a treat, I think, on this day here in Adelaide. All in readiness now. Big crowd inside, and unfortunately, a big crowd outside as well. Still trying to get in. That is very, very disappointing. I don't know if it's uh, because there are so many people or not enough uh, entrances manned. But it is disappointing that the first ball should be bowled when so many people are still trying to get in to see that very thing. Now ben McGrath is the man at the cathedral end. He's bowling for Matthew Paul. And a single from the first ball for New Zealand. So they're away quite well. They're up against uh, a strong bowling attack, McGrath and Bickle. Dale has come in for rifle, then there's Warren and Harvey and the two Warrens. In the commentary box, to start proceedings for us on uh, the splendid day, Bill Laurie, and with him is Ian Smith. Thank you, Richie. We know good uh, afternoon to our viewers right around the world. It's a perfect day in Adelaide. Warm, mid-twenties, bright and sunny. Good crowd, and New Zealand, after a great win yesterday against South Africa, batting first on a perfect pitch. With a single down to the third man, to Bickle. It's a very good uh, ground for the crowd to watch cricket too. They're pretty close to the proceedings. A lot of grassy mounds still. Reserve seating's been increased as well at Adelaide Oval. And the shade covers on the hill. They'll be looking for a big performance from the Australians today. Nice start. And a lot of confidence. McGrath just a little bit of width this, this afternoon. Sitting quick ground, there's much more bounce on the pitch. First three deliveries just outside the line of the off stump. You would expect Ian Smith to score around about 260 today. I think New Zealand would be happy with that, Bill. Good afternoon to you. And good afternoon to everyone watching. Fantastic setting here. And as you said, a good crowd, but I detect just a little bit of uh, nervousness about the crowd because they need a big performance. 
both the crowd and the men in yellow and gold. Swing and a miss. Astall, that's his game. Was short enough to be hit uh, square of the wicket. Sorry, I should say green and gold. Well, got that wrong. Yeah, a little bit of width. Not as uh, quick and as bouncy as he was fresh uh, first up at uh, Sydney the other night, Glenn McGrath, that's for sure. He was uh, really in form like there. He should bowl well on this pitch, though. Alan Donald did yesterday. Astor. Beating a change of pace. A big occasion for the new faces in the Australian lineup. The Harveys, the Divinudos. Very big occasion in front of a big crowd. Adam Gilchrist. Steve Warris, captain. Adam Dale, who played in the 7 1 internationals in South Africa. This is his first chance at home country. No wicket for three. Day cricket, possibly the financial saver of cricket worldwide due to the excellent skills of the players. The crowds have responded right around the world. Matthew Horn on strike, slip and a short cover in. Horn, who is coming off a brilliant hundred, Bell Reeve, it was disappointing yesterday when he hold out hitting down the ground. New Zealand side is unchanged from yesterday, and as you said, Matthew Horn and Nastle both missed out yesterday, Bill. So they'll be looking to rectify that, but they'll maintain Cairns at three, which is good. Then Fleming, who's a little bit out of sorts at the moment, but uh, he'll enjoy this occasion today. McMillan, the star of the show. Roger Twos and Perori and Harris, that may change a wee bit that order. Harris did bat in front of Perori yesterday and did it very well. Well struck and brilliantly fielded at uh, short cover, but he hit that right off the meat of the bat. Nathan Astor, that's his method in the one-day games, to go after the bowls in the first 15 overs. It's Mark War at short cover. Save four here, without doubt. It's beautifully timed. It really was. Just that uh, Mark War is such a natural athlete, and he will save plenty of runs in close there on the offside. All called. No, no. Oh, there's a chance of run out. Off a no ball. We'll hit the stumps. He's, that's close. That's close. Could it be a run out off a no ball? It could have happened, could it? No balls of call. That's foolish cricket. Nathan Astor was run out yesterday. Well, I don't know how many times to see this happen when the ball goes to, in that gully backward point area. You get mix ups. It's because of the fact that the striker is not looking at what his mate's doing. It's his call. Now, this will be tight. Yeah, a lot tighter than we all thought. I think he's back, Bill. I think he'll get the, the green light, but my word, run out off a no ball. What could have been? Well, what was the bloke at mid-on doing? Where was 34 Bickle? He was too late, wasn't he? He wasn't near the stumps. The bowl was almost back, and there he is, and he's home. And Andy Bickle was a little bit late getting there. A good throw from Stephen Warren. It's all happening in the second over, and what a let off. That area behind point, that gully, and it's the same to a certain extent on the leg side when it, it goes behind square. It, players at this level have still yet to sort out whose call it is, who's in control, and obviously there nobody was. A big let off. A swing and a miss. Dale gets the line and length correct. Well, the no ball call was early. 
Nathan Astle took off. War did well. It was a good throw. It was close enough to the bales. At the turn sideways, Bickle sort of balked, didn't he? And it was just a fraction late. I'd have to say that when Astle heard the no-ball call, he must have just thought, well, that's it. I mean, we don't take it. Need a run. We've got it. And he didn't even consider what Horn was up to at all. Horn must have heard the call. Surely he's right next to the umpire. No! Well, yesterday, Sean Pollock showed what determination skill can do. Nathan Astle was the non-striker. And this was a beautiful piece of work. There's the bowler. Just pushed down. And there's Astor being brushed aside by Pollock in the magnificent pick up and throw. Found him well short. Run out without scoring yesterday, Nathan Astor. That's struck square. Gets past the gully. They'll pick up two. And already you feel the tension between these two sides. There's a big build up to the crowd. New York Australian side, New Zealand coming off a win. And you just sort of feel the atmosphere is very tense. Pressure, and it's traditional rivalry at play. That's what it is. There's pressure on this outfit, this Australian outfit, that's for sure. There's a lot of uh, familiar faces no longer in this lineup. There's a new face, Adam Gilchrist. And boy, has he had some pressure in the media. Into the gap. Five off the over. It's no wicket for eight. going to be a full house at the Adelaide Oval. It's well bowled, McGraw getting a bit tired of the stumps. Looks to be a very good pitch today, the ball coming onto the bat. And I think New Zealand really have to take the bit between the teeth here and go in the first 15 overs and throw all the pressure on the Australians. We're going to bat under lights this evening. They will do. That's uh, what they've got this batting line up for. Astle promoted to open. That's what he does best in one day cricket. And he'll enjoy, or he should enjoy batting on this surface. Les Burdett has come up with another cracker here in Adelaide. He's got it. He's got enough of it too to run down the hill towards the fence, the short boundary. It's slowing up. It's going to be a very close chase, but that's four. Not off the meat of the bat, but the idea was on. Just signs that Nathan Astle's coming back into form here. This is just short of a length, not that short. He didn't quite get it, but he got enough of it, as you say. He wasn't uh, playing those sorts of shots in the test match, that's for sure. This arena really does suit him. Bra, just short of a good length. Not getting the bounce he extracted from the Sydney pitch with his lot of life early on. Just concentrate on not giving the batsman too much width. Just try and keep it uh, short of a very good length. Wonderful competitor. Shot. That's four more. Oh, it's all happening. A good shot. That's Tolan offside. Put it on the rise. Hard into the ground. That's all away. Yes, he is away. Pat on the back, too, from the partner. That's not a bad delivery either from Glenn McGrath, but it's got the treatment. It really has. Onto the front foot, Astor. That's what he likes to do. He's a very strong front foot player. That's the first movement in his batting stance, is to look to get forward. And then if he can get that much bat on it, he's in business. So the signs are good for him. Well, Bob, good reply. Genuine pace. Nice bounce. Absolute beauty, this. It bounced. There's a little bit more shoulder in this one, I think. A little bit of pain from the delivery before going to the fence. And that bounced and it climbed through to Gilchrist.
Very good record. The economy rate is fantastic for an opening bowl who will bowl the final overs as well. 88 wickets. Economy rate of 65. Eight runs off the over. It's none for 16. Over. To Matthew Horn. Matthew Horn uh, working the ball nicely this afternoon. Yesterday, he succumbed to the pace and the pressure of Pollock. He bowled a very good spell, nice and straight, and he tried to hit him down the ground, but he was never in the hunt. And Johnny Rad shows you how keen he is for catch. He knocked the cover out of the way and took the catch, and that was a disappointing end for Matthew Horn yesterday. But today, he looks very focused on the two nice late cuts. His partner's got a way to a flyer. That's into the gap. That's going to be a hard chase as well. It's Bevan, the big strider, but he's not going to get it. Three boundaries. Astor in quick succession. Well, this is a beautiful cricket shot. It really is. Really gets that front foot out a long way there and just caresses that pass mark wall in the previous over he stopped for. This time he couldn't. And that left him too, that delivery. It wasn't a bad one from uh, Adam Dale. I'd be quite surprised to see that whistle under the fence. Nice into the gap. And we're throwing the gauntlet down to the Australians, which you should do on a pitch like this in the first 15 overs when the field's up. Coming off a big win yesterday, they've been great spirits to the New Zealanders, and it was a, a win they badly needed. And you can see the difference this afternoon, the way they're going about this uh, start of the innings. Run rate of 6.28. Fine legs up, man squares on the boundary on the onside. Put the man inside the circle there just on the line and defending players down on the fence at square leg because of the square boundaries here in Adelaide. So you don't want any leg glances, you must be dead at the stumps. Strong offside field, the slip short cover point cover mid off in the third man. Because they're working the ball nicely, it's forced Stephen War to move Warren out of the first slip position and put him almost in a defensive position at about four slip. So if it's a genuine nick, there's every chance to go between the keeper and Warren. It's past the man at fine leg. Runs off the over. It's number 24. <laughs> New Zealand away to a flyer. I've had uh, a bad habit in recent years, New Zealand, of backing up after a good performance with a, a nightmarish one so they'll be aware of that you know they've had to come down from a pretty good performance in the field last night and uh, they've uh, had to steady themselves there's a lot of new faces in the side certainly double header type cricket for them is a new thing and playing in front of a crowd this size is as well for some of them so it's a difficult environment so a good start is what they need just to right the ship again and uh, get them underway well Charged him and he's got hold of it. It's a long high hit going way down to long on and it's a big hit. That's a six. What a start. McGrath charged and hit out of the ground. You wouldn't see this very often, would you? We're going to see it again, though, I can tell you that, Bill. This is a cracker of a shot. McGrath's actually bowled a slower delivery because he may have seen Astle coming. 
but that hasn't stopped him coming and it hasn't prevented him or made him stop the shot he's just whacked it now the boundary is in about uh, 15 meters so it wouldn't have been six uh, in the old adelaide oval but it is now it's a 90 meter hit it's a big hit he got it was a high ball as well carried a long long way magnificent camera work as well Bouncer, no ball, what's it happening, isn't it? The grass fired up, concedes a run. Caught that. Great cricket, really is. And Glenn McGrath knew he was going to give away a run, but uh, it's a question of how he follows this one up now. It was a beauty. Look at this for a double play. First the six down the ground. That's caused Glenn McGrath to just shake the head a wee bit. Cruel game for bowlers at time, one day cricket. And the reply... Hmm. He's going through the gap again when he pitches up. This time the fieldsman should cut it off. They should get three if they run hard. Bevan's got it. Oh, great start by New Zealand. Anything wrong with that bouncer as far as Astor was concerned. He didn't hook it for six. It was there to be put away with the short boundary. So McGrath's fired up. McGrath getting a bit of stick here, 2.3 overs, none for 21. Oh, the crowd, there's a big buzz. They've got their hats on, they're well covered up. Horn on strike, he's a silent partner, he's on six. Out. There's a bit of pad, a bit of bat. Umpire Terry Prue not moved. Good straight delivery from McGrath. And uh, this just seems back in towards the right hander. Strikes him, I think, just outside the line of off stump. It was pad onto bat. There's no doubt about that. But correct decision. Doing a good job. Wait there, wait there. With the single, Bickle the fieldsman. Terry, Terry Prue's at the cathedral end in the square leg. Australia's most experienced umpire, Daryl Hare. 30th one day international. It's probably our second. Uh, Steve Randall will be number one as far as games is concerned. Well bowled, nice and straight. What a good pitch. Right it's none for 35. It's Adam Dale from the city end. First false stroke. Horn, he's played pretty well so far. Tom, there wasn't a lot of bounce. Well, that area of uh, slip gully area is completely vacant now, and that's what he's trying to find here with the shot. They'll have to be just a little bit careful that he doesn't give too much room outside off stump because it's now a free hit. All space there. Shane Warne's disappeared. What it does, it brings the compulsory two catching fieldsmen 14 metres from the bat, and now placed at short mid wicket, and on the offside at short cover. But I just wonder how they're going to get them out. The new ball, you're hoping for one or two catches in the slip cordon or the wicket keeper. So it's basically a defensive field. That struck. Straight to cover, the first time they found the fieldsman. It's Michael Bevan in the covers here. 
But uh, the good sign is that both New Zealand batsmen are looking to invent here, looking to uh, leave their ground, trying to upset the line and the length of the Australian bowlers. It's certainly worked for Astle. Important day too for Michael Bevan. Hugely important day for Stephen War. Oh, beautiful outswing. That's Dale's strength. He's a good line bowler with the ability to swing the ball away. And that's Bill why I think he should st still have a slip in there because if this is his stock and trade delivery, he must be supported in the field. It's a beautiful delivery line and length. Now, if he gets a genuine nick on that and it doesn't go to Gilchrist, it doesn't deserve runs, but that's what he'd get. They need a wicket, Australia, to stop the momentum. No ball called. Coming back on the no ball for the second. First time Dale has conceded a run this over. It's a bit ragged there. The throw a little bit wide. And blew it. And Dale only in his eighth one day international. Best bowling three for 18. It's Nick and it's bottom edge and it's going for four. Dale gets the in swinger there. Horn drives, goes way down the leg side. It's unbelievable start for New Zealand. Fortune favours the brave, Bill. This is a pretty brave shot. Just uh, bottom, bottom hand came into play there for Matthew Horn. Was never really in control. It was a little bit like yesterday, driving at a length he perhaps shouldn't have. But when it's your day. Things like this go for you. I think he's deceived by the bowler. That was brought him two outswingers and gave him a beautiful in swinger. Seven off the over. It's none for 42. Surrounded by cricket grounds and tennis courts, athletic track, golf course. Grass spot on. The gates have been closed at the Adelaide Oval. Only the ticket holders coming in now. That's a wonderful thing for Adelaide and cricket. What it also tells me and should tell people at home, for future games, get and get your tickets early. Don't miss out on this series. They'll be lining up in Melbourne already, Bill. Good shot. Beats uh, the slip. Down to third man for single. Down to Bickle. It's clever cricket for New Zealanders. When McGrath does drop short, they're just playing the late cut or driving on the up on the offside. No doubt about that Nathan Astle is the guy that's got them away here. He's on 26, but his partner Horn is now on 15. It's 43 off 41. It's a wonderful start. And they need a big score. It's a good pitch. Ideal for bat batting and stroke play in general. Got it. Just wider square leg. It's four more on guard, dropping short. Pulled away. Well, they've got to McGrath, I feel. They've upset him. Usually he's got a very cool head, and you see the facial expression there. He's just taking a couple of deep breaths and saying, steady on, I'm better than this. These young fellas are taking me apart. Just a little bit short of a length. Good eye, Nathan Astle. Another field change now as a result of that. Up comes fine leg inside the circle there to the right of your screen, just going inside and out to the fence, deep backward square leg. It's four more, that is a gem. That's probably the shot of the afternoon so far. He's tearing McGrath apart, Nathan Astle, and it's none for 51, 6.4 overs bold. Well, there's a bit of a grin there, but uh, I'm not sure it's a genuine one. It's probably saying that wasn't a bad nut either, but it's gone. 
beautiful square cut really was because he was able to get over the bounce of the ball he just stood there and cracked it tremendous batting so ball he misses it wide call that's fair enough too well the crowd they're humming I'm not sure what they're humming They'd be enjoying it, and this is a wonderful batting display. They've seen Australia's best fast bowler being taken apart in the early stage of this one day international. It's a very important one for the Australians. They've beaten in the Sydney Cricket Ground by South Africa. And New Zealand are away to a fire, but it's early days. It's going to be a big scoring day here in Adelaide. Waiting. Didn't time that one, hit that into the pitch. Interesting now what's going through that mind. I'm sure bowling changes, that's for sure. Well, it's interesting. The Australian selectors rested Paul Rifle. That's part of their plan this year, not to over-bowl their fast bowlers and brought in Adam Dale, which is fair enough. It's without one of his most experienced line bowlers in Paul Rifle, Stephen Moore. Ian Harvey, of course, will do that job today. Ten runs off the over. It's none for 52. Thanks, Bill. No! A marvellous start uh, by New Zealand. Exactly what uh, they've wanted. As Ian Smith's been saying for the last couple of days, they, they look to uh, get things moving early, set a decent target, and then try and bowl to contain the opposition. From Australia's point of view, they've got to get that run rate down and get it down pretty quickly. Problem for Steve Waugh, the captain. Obviously, he wants to get that run rate down, and uh, he obviously realises the best way to do that is get a wicket or two. But he's had to uh, he's had to disperse the field a bit. There are no slips in. He's catching men are now in front of the wicket. So at the moment, he's caught between a rock and a hard place because he wants wickets. But he also wants to slow the run rate. Well, that's nicely struck. The slower ball, beautifully picked. And they've only got one thing on their mind at the moment, the New Zealand batsman attack. It's been a great performance so far from uh, both of them. Astral is the one who's caught the eye in the main. That was the slower ball, and do you think he picked it? Gave it a tremendous whack. Bit of pressure on out there at the moment. Always nice when uh, someone you've been saying all through a test series can bat. Suddenly he comes out and plays like it. Uh, this. That's uh, Nathan Astor. He has uh, hit most of the balls he's faced right off the meat of the bat today. He's gone to 34. And he's played uh, in very exciting fashion. Nathan Astle really uh, came to prominence in the World Cup. Got a century in the first match that New Zealand played against England, opening the batting. And uh, that really set him going. And he's uh, shown that he's got the ability to convert a good start into centuries. That's not quite off the middle of the bat, but it's safe. New Zealand, none for 58 after eight. <laughs> Brought into the attack by Stephen Moore. And I guess that's a measure of the success that the New Zealand openers have had. 
Glenn McGrath, four overs for 32. And Adam Dale, four overs for 26. Five boundaries have been hit by Nathan Astall, plus a six. And Matthew Horn's hit two boundaries. So it's been a tremendous start. Now some pressure being brought to bear by Stephen Waugh as he brings the leg spinner in to do the double job that Warren does so well to get a breakthrough but also slow the scoring. He only allowed uh, two men outside uh, the field restriction circle. He's got one at deep square and the other one at long on. It's uh, just about an orthodox field for Shane Warren but perhaps not orthodox in the context of uh, limited overs cricket. Gets to it on the full, but uh, can't avoid the man at uh, deep backward square, Michael Bevan. slip for uh, Shane Warne It'll be a little bit of turn there for him slightly different conditions to what you find at the SCG the ball spins more at the SCG Matthew Horn's got that one pretty well just short of the rope That was beautifully played because I think you'll see on the replay that he was fractionally beaten in the flight and then changed the direction of the stroke from over long on to over long off. Just that little bit of an adjustment. And uh, only half a yard in it for a four or a six. Shane Warne has suggested to the umpire that he asked the fieldsman. Umpire Pru uh, has asked the umpire. And it's been given a four. Overspin required in Adelaide, whereas you uh, can use a lot of side spin in Sydney as a leg spinner. But uh, the good leg spinners say that uh, more overspin is required in Adelaide. There's a flipper astray down the leg side. Cost him a run. Yeah, Shane Warne, when he started off, had side spin, I'd say only side spin. That's the flipper. And it's really skidded off. Miss his gloves by much. Neatly taken by Gilchrist. Yes, Warren started off as a side spinner. And uh, he very quickly realised what Ian Chappell was talking about with overspin. Oh. That's well struck. Too well for Michael Bevan. Jeez, a sweet time with the ball, Matthew Horn. We saw this in the test match uh, down in Hobart, where he made his 100, and we were in the commentary box, that is, of the unanimous question, where's he been? Because you can't play as well as he did in Hobart and not be a good player. I always believe a cricketer can do again what he's done uh, once very well. Ten runs off that over, it's none for 68.
Arby is a man that uh, quite often is used in the late overs to stop the uh, hectic run rate. Now he's got to do it in the early overs. Arby uh, uses a great variety of deliveries and also uh, keeps the ball well up at the stumps. And that's the. Uh, it's going to be the blueprint for his bowling in this, the 10th over. Made his debut the other night at the SCG. Good call from Matthew Horn. Very big crowd in here, just to uh, confirm for you that uh, the gates have been closed. That was uh, quite a while after the start of play. And a uh, very enthusiastic crowd as well. But uh, due to the fact that uh, the match had not been sold out when the first ball was bowled, we were unable uh, to confirm that live coverage into Adelaide would be for the entire day's play. Yes, um, we accuse the people outside before the start of play. But uh, it wasn't until the game had got underway that uh, we were informed that the match had been sold out. Still people outside, but... Um, when that first ball was bowled, we were unable to confirm live coverage into Adelaide for the whole day's play. That's a pretty good over from Ian Harvey. New Zealand none for 71. light last night and it's uh, a light again here this afternoon thanks to the batting of Matthew Horn and Nathan Astle I was talking about uh, Nathan Astle and the form that he showed during the World Cup one of the things that impressed me about his play was that he, he had the ability and the courage to hit over the top in the first 15 overs oh, and once the field was spread he took the opportunity to just uh, push ones and twos, and if a boundary uh, opportunity came along, he took it. But uh, he has the ability to convert those good starts into centuries. Oh, it's a matter of whether he's got the form and the confidence at the moment on this tour. I think the confidence is coming back, whether he's got enough of it to uh, be able to convert this into something decent. That's a lovely shot. Good footwork. Matthew Horn was coming forward. Saw it a little short. It was quick to come on the back foot. I was very impressed with his footwork in uh, in Hobart when he made that hundred. He's uh, certainly carried that forward into this game here. He's made 31 now. Although he's not as flamboyant as Astor, he's in there with some uh, lovely cultured strokes. Oh. He's uh, adaptable as well. He's got plenty of space over there on the onside. There's no one from deep backward square to long on. Plenty of space for the lofted stroke there. Bow, Borny. Over. New Zealand, none for 74.
that's a very good Yorker, but well run in the end. Quick thinking from Matthew Horn. Not sure he has a bat left. Nathan Astle, that was a wonderful Yorker. That uh, could easily have uh, done something to the handle of the bat. Clever cricket. Just to give you an idea or a comparison of Nathan Astle's ability to convert centuries, he's got four one-day international centuries, which is the most for New Zealand, equal with Martin Crow. He's played in 51 matches, Martin Crow more than 100. This will be a good uh, little test for Ian Harvey. He's coming through it all right so far. Gilchrist has come up over the stumps. Another good Yorker. This is what's needed. The Australians uh, have had it ripped away from them in the first 12 overs, 75 runs. Gilchrist has come up to the stumps to stop the batsmen moving out of their crease to try and uh, combat the Yorker. So, being fought on two fronts at the moment. And looking for the leg side stumping, that's a brilliant piece of work. Wide has been called by umpire Hare, and Terry Prue has called for the video uh, replay. Brilliant piece of work by Adam Gilchrist. Wonderful wicket keeping. Instantly reminded me of uh, Tim May when he had Robin Smith stumped at Lords. He's okay. That's still brilliant work by Gilchrist. The umpire's right to call for it, but uh, the batsman hasn't dragged. That's wonderful cricket. They played for it. Harvey and Gilchrist, two newcomers to the team. Not overawed to try something like this. They knew it would be called a wide. His toe has stayed down there. Gilchrist has almost got him. But that is absolutely brilliant all round. Uh, there were some hoots and jeers around the ground, but uh, although it was a wonderful piece of cricket, it wasn't out. 76 on the board for no wicket at the moment. It's not sure why they call that a wide when it is, uh, it is really trying to get a wicket. Not all that far down the leg side. The batsman has the opportunity to hit the ball. I think it's a little harsh on the bowler myself. Normally I'm with you on wides, uh, Ian, but I don't think I could say that one shouldn't be a wide. That was that was a bit wide, wide. Break. Ball in. That's a very good over from Ian Harvey. It's none for 76. well played by Nathan Astle and this is what he has a tendency to do once he's got started just push the ball around and try and produce a big score for his team one of the things I've liked about him the times I've seen him before this tour and that he uses his brain he's got a bit of common sense ah! big shout there and umpire Pru has given him so Shane Warne has done the job He's got rid of Matthew Horn. I think he might have done it with a flipper as well. We're behind the wicketkeeper here, so he's slightly obscured. We'd need to check it on the replay. I'd be inclined to back the flipper. Yep, it looked middle and leg and about uh, three or four inches below the top of the bales. One for 77. And the next 
then is the New Zealand captain, Stephen Fleming. Well, there's been a lot to like about Stephen Fleming's captaincy on this tour. He's got better and better with every game that he's done. And uh, this is a move that you've got to admire. He's pushed himself up the order ahead of Chris Cairns, who batted at three yesterday. And he's coming in to confront his tormentor, Shane Warne, the man who's been getting him out regularly. Now then, limited overs game. And uh, we're into the 13th over only, not up to 15 yet. This is the wicket that has brought Stephen Fleming out to the centre. Yeah, not quite the flipper, just looked a little bit different there, but uh, that's out of the front of the hand. That out in Warren's mind, or in the umpire's hand, it was plumb. Now, unusual. Stephen Fleming has come out now at that point in the 13th over. Warren has been his tormentor and has had him caught at uh, short forward square leg twice in the test matches no short forward square there but he has got a silly point oh, start warning. He's struck by Stephen Fleming Fleming may just feel that uh, because it's a one-day match this is an opportunity for him to get out there and play a few shots find some form and perhaps find a method of playing Shane Warne confidently. A very interesting battle. It falls short of Steve War. Well, you've only got a certain number of fieldsmen out there, but it. Uh, it was definitely an option to have the man in at uh, short forward square where Greg Blewett had taken a couple of catches in the test matches inside edge onto the pad and then away on the onside. thing that's interesting about that previous delivery if there hadn't been a bat pad in there he I doubt that he would have caught it because the ball carried a fair way would have gone over his head so it might not have helped much anyhow that's a good over from Shane Warne one for 77 after 13 drive and then the Adelaide Oval and later on this evening it'll be all lit up again a magnificent sight it was and way to the left of the, uh, the Adelaide Oval there you see the back courts of Memorial Drive and then the Adelaide number two ground now Adam Gilchrist has moved back with Nathan Astle on strike so it'll be interesting to see if uh, Astle tries to give him the charge. A very good performance from uh, Ian Harvey. It's only really in his second big match. Called a wide. But his uh, general bowling has been good so far. Hasn't been overawed. Sometimes a bowler whose specialty is, say, the Yorker and the slower ball will get into a big match and be overcome by the occasion. Shows no sign of that at all. Bowl well the other evening at the SCG. And he's certainly doing the same here. 
As Nathan Astle uh, looking to whip that one through mid wicket. He's perhaps uh, got to rethink his tactics a little. He's got to try and come up with a tactic. That will allow him to uh, give the bowler something to think about at the moment. The bowler is doing all the dominating. Doesn't seem over worried at the moment. This is one of the aspects of his temperament. Ian Chapel was talking about. But, uh, he plays calmly and within himself. It's the other delivery that Harvey uses a lot, the slower ball. The arm speed remains the same. It's a very good slower ball. That's the secret with uh, the slower ball. Your arm has to come over at the same speed as for your normal delivery. Otherwise, the batsman instantly will pick something different. Half the time, they'll gamble on it being a slow one. It's nicely struck. Just the wide in that over. It's one for 78. Now, Ball that's well fielded. That was probably going to beat mid off. This looks to me as though Warren has in mind uh, what he did down in Hobart, the second innings to Fleming. He got a top spinner to slide away from him, just drift away. And had him stumped. moment he's bowling only the leg break which is uh, the off spinner to the left-hander he does have that very good top spinner that slides away Stephen Fleming hasn't found a way to score off Warren so far apart from that innings in Brisbane where he got 91 but since then he's been struggling to score runs off Warren This time he's decided to go through the onside and he's hit it well. well uh, there's no hint of desperation there because he's played three lovely straight drives as well. He's uh, intent on carrying the attack to Warren. He's picked that as the off spinner to him. And also has a half volley. This time he gets it through the offside gap. Although well, the New Zealanders have lost Matthew Horn, made uh, 31, made them in good style. Their scoring rate has been good just in the last few overs. Harvey and uh, Horn have uh, put a bit of a break on. Now McGrath is going back to long on, almost to the rope. Six runs off that over. It's one for 84 after 15. going to be Harvey to continue now three overs no wicket for six he's figures he's bowled well it's not always lightning fast bowling or bounces and those sorts of uh, deliveries that cause problems when you bowl accurate medium paces with a good change of pace in one day cricket it can be very effective well, I think what Harvey's done more than anything is uh, keep the ball very full both uh, Astle and Horn are getting some purchase by getting underneath uh, the Australian fast bowlers in uh, McGrath and Dale. But Harvey has bowled basically Yorkers and low full tosses. 
And low full tosses aren't very easy to put away if you've got a very straight field set, which basically he has. Yes, there's um, that over pitch delivery, so he's definitely erring on being over pitched rather than under pitched. And that's uh, a very good strategy. It's an age old one. I can remember starting my one day cricket matches back in England in the 66 sort of period. Ted Dexter used to say, it's up or up and straight, otherwise you're off. And up and straight means getting it right up on that line there, and if necessary, slightly over pitching. That's terrific bowling. It's very hard to bowl six Yorkers uh, in succession, and we saw a full toss from Harvey, the previous delivery, but that one was right on that white line where Tony suggested. Terrific, right up in the block hole there. And it drifted in a little bit as well, which creates more of a problem. And then he slips in the slow one. So uh, not only is he keeping it up, but he's changing his pace as well. And he disguises it well. Watch his hand here. This is the one that uh, lets the ball go out the back of his hand. A little bit of top spinner on it. And uh, it pitched right up there as well. This is really good bowling. This is his fourth over now. That's the over pitch delivery and the sweeper back there cleaning up. And Michael Bevan swooping on that one. Well, he's had all sorts of nicknames over the years. Uh, Ian Harvey, they is known as the freak because he does freaky things all the time. Uh, at the cricket academy, we used to call him Goya, Goya halves. Nicely placed again. The sweeper on the other side picking it up that time. Four runs off the over, one for 88. Fleming that there's a man right on the boundary waiting for that lofted sweep shot. So far, what he's done is try to whip the ball wide of mid on. Every now and again, he takes a little bit of a risk and plays with the spin. That's the mid on fieldsman there. He tries to uh, knock it through there. They've also got uh, Steve Waugh fielding it uh, short mid wicket. So perhaps uh, he's now going to change that strategy and just knock him away on the offside. I think the Australians have got to be very careful here. The two bowlers that appear, well, certainly at this stage, to uh, uh, be the guys that are going to stop the Kiwi scoring quickly are Warren and Harvey. Now, Warren's into his fifth over. I hope that Stephen Ward doesn't bowl him out because uh, he's going to be needed later in the innings as well, particularly if the New Zealanders have wickets in hand. And Harvey, as we all know, is a specialist finisher. He's been called on very early today to try and put the handbrake on, so perhaps that's another nickname for him, Handbrake Harvey. I think um, it might be just be worthwhile looking at um, the runs scored in the first 15 overs. There's been a lot of talk about uh, how sides attack these matches. Just looking at the first match there, the SCG, Australia versus South Africa, after 15 overs, they scored 55 and 52. Ah! Big appeal there for LBW again. Just off the uh, pad and then the bat that time. Warren getting uh, quite excited about this one. See if we can... Uh, let's just have a look at this again. After 15 overs at the SCGs, 55 and 52. The first match in Adelaide, 69 by New Zealand uh, in their first 15 overs. And today, the New Zealanders have scored 84 for one in their first 15 overs. So that magic figure of getting 100 and spins away outside off stump. It's that target which uh, I think emanates from the Sri Lankan side. See if we can get 100 runs of the first 15 overs and set the innings up. Not a bad effort by New Zealand today. A oh, fantastic effort. Uh, the way they started, it was looking like about 140. Had it not been for Harvey and Warren, uh, it was headed in that direction. Down. Good work. Fielded. Oh, that was a good over as well. Just one run from it. One for 89. Firm 
that uh, all tickets had been sold before the start of play, largely because they weren't. But it is now full. The gates have been closed, and uh, these pictures will go to air in Adelaide for the duration of the match. Well, that's very good news. Uh, it is going to be, one would hope, the most exciting game. It's shaping that way. Terrific contest so far. That one straight to short extra cover. And uh, just for those of you who've just joined the telecast, quick look at the wicket that has fallen so far. The wicket of Horn, he was LBW to Warn. Oh, was he ever. That ball's just gone straight on. Would have hit middle stump. Absolutely salmon trout, that. No hesitation. Oh, and uh, they were thinking about one there. I think this is now going to be very interesting because uh, two things have got to happen. The captain of Australia, Stephen Waugh, has got to make a decision, as Rod Marsh pointed out, just before the drinks break. What is he going to do? How long is he going to let these two bowlers continue for? The captain of New Zealand, who's on strike at the moment, has got to decide whether he's going to try and cut loose again or whether he's just going to continue along the lines that uh, they've been playing the last 10 minutes or so. Perhaps he's waiting for Warren to do something. Perhaps uh, they feel that these are the two danger men. If they could just uh, see off another couple of overs here from them, they'll get uh, the next two bowlers on, and that's when they can turn it on again. Captaining these cricket teams is not a walk in the park. It's a uh, pretty difficult decisions to be made. The Australians have been a little bit sloppy here today. It's unlike them. They usually razor sharp. They don't fumble. They uh, throw the ball back beautifully to either the bowler's end or the wicketkeeper. But uh, I think they are uh, almost in a state of shock there for a while when the New Zealand uh, batsman came out and absolutely pogoed them all over the park. Runs were coming everywhere. A good Yorker to finish the over that. New Zealand one for 92. be that happy today because uh, having bowled so beautifully in the first match uh, well I don't think he bowled that badly I think the, well, perhaps it was a bit of each it was a little loose and um, the New Zealanders really got stuck in oh. it's well run if four overs for 32 for Glenn McGrath no wonder he's not happy Four fours and a six. Nathan Astle whacked him for. A no ball and a wide in there. The no ball was a bouncer, which nearly struck Astle a nasty blow to the head. Warren and Harvey have certainly put the handbrake on this uh, New Zealand onslaught. Yes, so uh, we've got a graphic here that will uh, show you exactly what's happened. The uh, start was, uh, from New Zealand's point of view, quite dramatic. You could see uh, whacked, it just went up, and then all of a sudden they got uh, put the brakes on a bit, and that wicket obviously, is, uh, there was a little bump there, but it sort of leveled things out a bit. So uh, the run rate has uh, dropped by about two and a half runs per over from its high. 7.55 after nine overs, now down to 5.08. And there's still a fair bit of fun to come, I can tell you. Um, Cairns is in next, and uh, we saw him play a, a little gem of an innings yesterday. Uh, two uh, really big hits. Macmillan played beautifully. He's in after him. So uh, this New Zealand batting lineup, if they click, capable of scoring their runs fast. And they seem to have uh, adopted a a Sri Lanka type of philosophy. I suppose that's understandable, Marshy, because uh, when you look at these two sides, and I'm sure they haven't got a Jaya Saria, but uh, they've got some good attacking batsmen, and they've got a, a, a relatively mediocre bowling side. They have, but uh, it must 
then mean that the South African bat batting was terrible because if their bowling was mediocre last night, the poor old South Africans just uh, couldn't handle it. I think there's a lot of reasons for that. The ball not coming coming onto the bat, etc. No. Over. We'll come back to that in a moment. Five off the over, one for 97. Bowl straight, and South Africa certainly uh, panicked last night. That's uh, gone off the edge of the bat, perhaps the bottom edge, and uh, will it hit the fence? I think it will. Yeah, Glenn McGraw, just a little slow getting out of the blocks there, and uh, that four brings up the hundred now for New Zealand. That was a strange one. It seemed to, um, to hit the toe of the bat. Well, it was a low full toss again, but the, the problem with it was, from Harvey's point of view, it was wide and uh, wide enough to get a bit of an edge on it and it ran away quite quickly off the outside edge for four yes so just getting back to this new zealand attack uh, rather like the sri lankans um i think they they're working at specializing in uh, that department just bowl straight and full rather like harvey's doing now make sure that the bowling is spot on target uh, and that there's a high standard of fielding. That one squeezed out very late. So if uh, they get a decent score and uh, then they bowl tightly and field well, they've got a chance. And, uh, today, from New Zealand's point of view, so far so good. Good start. Some good players to come. The only area I can see it going wrong is that perhaps they don't have the depth of batsmen. Another single. They don't have the depth of batsmen if they lose three or four wickets in the first 15 overs. They then really have to uh, just try and survive the next 50 and uh, they would be lucky to post a score, uh, a winning score, shall we say. But I think the method is basically pretty right. Certainly is. Harvey again. Slower one. Heaved away down to fine leg. This is a wonderful sight from uh, up here in the commentary box, just looking down at this uh, big crowd down to our right, uh, what they call Family Hill. And uh, a reminder again that uh, for those of you watching this telecast in Adelaide, the decision has now been made that uh, this telecast will, in fact, will, in fact, uh, be broadcast for the duration of the match. That's the end of the over. It's one front and four. Truly above, better than a runner ball. Change in the bowling, Mark War. So uh, Steve War, the skipper, obviously wants to save Shane Warne. He's got four overs left, as has Ian Harvey. Now, Shane Warne's first over cost him 10 runs, and his next five, 16, and a wicket. And uh, that went way down the leg side. It didn't really get anything on that, I don't think. Perhaps uh, a leg by to, to keep an eye on the umpire here. In fact, he's given it wide. So that's not a great start. Yes, I think uh, their eyes might just light up now that uh, Mark Wars into the attack. They've uh, been kept quiet. They've been waiting for a change to be made. The field has now been spread as well. There's uh, one, two, three, four, six men on the boundary. Is he going to try and um, hit him? That's the question. 
Nestor's played very well so far. The fieldsman spreading out. It's the onside field. Anything down the ground he's got to be a bit careful of. There's a, a long on down here. So if he's going to hit it, he's going to hit it. He's got to hit it straight back over his head. There's a little bit of a gap at mid wicket, although uh, the square area is covered. So there's a fieldsman there and one down there. So these boundary areas all covered. That's why they call him the freak, Ian Harvey. He's a right-hander. He picked it up left-hand through it. Very close to the stumps at quite good pace. Almost. Believe he's a left-hander, couldn't you? Very good. It's not a bad start for Mark War. War keeping an eye on uh, the field. In, in. We'll be looking for two here, but I think they'll have to settle for one. Yes. Bickle, the fieldsman. And his turn's going to come with the ball. Well, he finished off quite nicely in Sydney, uh, Andy Bickle. He got the ball. Nicely played down the ground by Assel. They'll look for a second here. It's a long way away from the stumps. And come back quite easily. Seven from the over. One for 111. It really is a beautiful oval, Adelaide Oval, and the setting is quite magnificent. Torrens Lake in the foreground there. Some of our commentators prefer to call it a river. Well, I can tell you that uh, Torrens Lake is going to go under, uh, going to undergo some rehabilitation very shortly. Oh. Going to spend 2.2 million dollars uh, dredging the bottom of that lake to remove 60 years of accumulated sediment. There we are, Marshy. After our little stint here, we could go down and paddle one of those boats around the lake. In the foreground there, the the Bradman stand, looking straight down the pitch. You can see in the, in the distance the scoreboard down the other end. Into the gap, but the sweep is back there. Well, these New Zealand are certainly setting up uh, this innings for a, a real go at the end. Of the course, scoreboard ticking over nicely now. They're uh, at about five, just over five and over. They're still playing really well, just three short of his half century. Harvey's not allowing Astle much room outside off stump at all. He's firing the ball in there at Midland League stumps and uh, very full. And that really has stopped Astle from uh, getting too much bat on, on Harvey. And, uh, that was that uh, attempt at a Yorker, the quicker one. Well, another good over, just one from it. One for 112. Absolutely packed it is. Oh. That one swept away. Not uh, off the middle of the bat, just lobbed away down uh, behind square. So just one run in the commentary box now. It's going to be Richie Benno and Ian Smith. It's Tony, high excitement here. One for 113. 
good cricket. Exciting stuff, excellent batting. Splendid fight back by uh, the Australian bowlers. Harvey and Warren did the job. And uh, now just a little interlude where New Zealand could get back on top. Plenty of wickets in hand. Still nine to go. Afternoon, Ian Smith. It's good afternoon, Richie. It is absorbing this little period in play. It's a bit of cat and mouse, really. And uh, I think Astle's done very well just to. Uh, curb his natural instincts and uh, make sure that the platform continue to be built. There's no point in both the batsman Horn and Astle getting out together, then uh, New Zealand would have had to really restart, but uh, Astle's just reassessed, and Fleming I think is starting to develop a little bit of form. He's had a terrible time against Shane Warne in particular, and the fact that he hasn't got out to him today will do him no end of good. Red Mist gets in front of uh, Nathan Astle's eyes. Needs to brush it aside and uh, substitute one that says, get a hundred, get a hundred, get a hundred. He's got a great opportunity out there. Well, there's half a hundred to start. One for 116. Nathan Astle 50, Stephen Fleming 26, one for 116, change in the bowling. Steve War is being forced to chop and change out there, try something, try something else if it doesn't work. And so far, we've had five bowlers, six coming up, Andy Bickle. And we're into the 24th over, almost to the halfway mark, 50 overs each side. Now that Harvey's out of the attack, I think you might just see a freeing up from the New Zealand batsman. Harvey bowled brilliantly. He really did. And if at the end of this match, uh, Australia do get up and win the match, then I think they can thank that little spell from Harvey, bringing them back into it very early on. Tremendous change of pace and the accuracy with which he tried to bowl Yorkers was uh, quite astounding. Captain's got to be uh, up with the game all the time, no, not just in test matches, but in the limited overs games as well. One of the things he has to do is make sure he has the right bowlers towards the end of an innings. And uh, the way Steve War is doing it at the moment, it's a possibility that he's keeping Warren and Harvey, his two best bowlers so far, to bowl the last seven overs, Warren would bowl the first of the seven, and uh, then Harvey at the other end has three still to go out of his permitted ten. Pretty harsh, Nathan Astle, particularly on Glenn McGrath earlier on. They had a good battle, but Astle clearly came out on top early on. Shot 
shots all around the ground and once they get through that inner circle here at Adelaide those boundaries square of the wicket are very short and they all raced away to the fence one of the things Ian Harvey did was uh, refuse to give the batsman any width Maybe a little different now with uh, Andy Bickle. He's not quite as accurate, but he is a bit quicker. That's a good uh, description of what Nathan Astor has done. Boundaries and little pushes for singles. And some excellent timing. One for 120. Now the uh, three players out there, the captain, vice captain, Steve War and Shane Warne, man who, surprisingly to me, has never been given any position of responsibility in the team as regards captaincy or vice captaincy. Mark War. Still be given the responsibility of bowling now. in the back of the commentary box earlier Ian listening to you talking with Bill and saying that, uh, with the sellout here they'll be queuing up in Melbourne already it's a great sight there as you know it's a single down to deep backward square and uh, the game coming up there on uh, Tuesday that's Australia South Africa no good saying it would be a packed house there because uh, it does hold uh, around about 100,000 but uh, it'll be a big crowd, and tickets at Ticketmaster will be of considerable benefit in making sure you get the seat you want. A lot of people these days uh, study the plans of uh, the grandstands when they go to Ticketmaster and Bass, and all the other ticket organisations around Australia. And they have their favourite little areas. Mightn't get the exact seats they want, but if they book their tickets, they can just about do that. And there might not be uh, a huge crowd. Uh, you can't get that many in at Hobart, but I'll tell you what, I'd be queuing up down there because uh, New Zealand and South Africa South Africa will be wanting to do some payback. Oh, June. For getting beaten here in Adelaide yesterday. So if you're a Hobart resident, it's entertainment. Get your tickets there. 036 That's very neatly done by Nathan Ashall. Just waited on and turned at 1 for 124. We showed the viewers a succession of boundaries in the previous over from Astor. It's now been 46 deliveries since he's hit his last boundary. And that is a testament to some fine bowling from Harvey and Warren. Five fours and a six, but that seems a long time ago. Five and over at the moment. Uh, lots of banners around uh, this ground today, and a great deal of uh, care has been taken, a great deal of time as well, I would imagine. There'll be quite a number of uh, banners mentioning uh, Mark Taylor and Ian Healy. Uh, 
<laughs> well, he didn't deviate. The umpire might speak to him and suggest that he run somewhere else, but straight up uh, the centre of the pitch. That would be uh, one way of suggesting to him that uh, he shouldn't get himself between the ball and the stubs. And there he goes. Well, this is quite clever cricket all round, really. It's good call from Astle. He's going to the danger in originally. Now Fleming runs the line of the throw. Now that is what Astle did not do yesterday when Tollock threw the stumps down. And Bickle ends up saying, I'm sorry I hit you. Fleming won't mind being hit in that circumstance. Bickle's not very experienced, I can tell you. He hasn't, hasn't played much cricket if, uh, if he's saying sorry there. Either that or he's never run down the centre of the pitch. stand between these two and they've played well good to see uh, Stephen Fleming running into some sort of form and poor time in the test match so did Astor so it's remarkable the difference these limited overs matches make where they have to go out and do certain things Well bowled. One for twenty one for one twenty-eight. Good throw. And <laughs> just a little signal to Glenn McGrath uh, to say that the stumps are four or five yards further over to the right and a couple of yards further on. Yeah, I thought the, the little signal might also have said something like, the man with the gloves is at the other end. If you want to throw it that hard. Maybe you're right. I don't know. I'll settle for gloves as well. Oh! Whatever it was, we know he wasn't very happy with Glenn McGrath. But then, he's in good company because Glenn McGrath's not very happy with himself. Played, but it was also pretty well bowled by Mark War. He saw him come in, he dragged it down, tested the batsman, and Astor was uh, more than equal to it. Well, this is a very good piece of cricket action all round from go to woe. Good piece of bowling, good piece of batting too. Able to adjust, waits for the ball, doesn't thrash at it, just guides it away. So the placement is then good, and the outfielding from Blewett is pretty special as well. Quickly to the ball. Excellent throw, top stuff.
Oh, Mark. Over. It's one for 136. And they've kept the scoring rate moving along. Sheffield Shield game uh, is going on at the moment across at the WACA ground in Perth. Lunch day three, David Boone, 146. Sean Young's 47 not out, good cricketer. Damien Martin, 2 for 24, Matthew Garno, 2 for 63. A high scoring game there with uh, Western Australia getting away to a big score, 9 for 404, declared Tom Moody 160. And Dean Hills made 61 yesterday, Boone went on to 146 today and has dominated the scoring, 6 for 309. But it's difficult to see uh, how they're going to get a, an outright result there. Lunch, day three, not much time left. No ball call against uh, Andy Bickle. Yes, uh, lunch, day three, and Tasmania is still behind. So it's a question of whether they can get up to get their two points or whether WA will claim them. those big scores at the Wacker Richie makes me wonder whether they've found some way to uh, seal the cracks as when the, the match gets into the third and fourth day over there in the last year or so those big cracks open up then batting is not that easy those scores seem to suggest it is at the moment it's always easy at Adelaide because of the job that Les Boudet does with his roller and equipment very good pitch here Slower ball. They'll need to motor. And good cricket, good running between the wickets. Astral had to go very fast. He realised he was going to the danger end. Greg blew it across the field. The thing about these boundaries is it's sometimes not that easy to run to. So you have to place the ball perfectly. That is not to time it too well at times. It was a good Yorker, but a bad no ball. It's just gone on to 1 for 143. Now there's the basis there for... A real go at the Australian bowlers towards the end. They've got nine wickets in hand. And a little testing time for Steve Waugh. Two of the uh, newer players and younger players have uh, done well here so far. Ian Harvey. As Ian Harvey is uh, is one who's bowl well, bowl well at the SCG also. Shane Warren's the experienced player who's done well. Gilchrist has uh, done a good job behind the stumps today. It did nothing wrong up in Sydney either. The neat display. One for 144. 
calling Robert Bernard from Broadview. Robert Bernard from Broadview, can you come to the match office located in the members area, please? Robert Bernard from Broadview, please come to the match office immediately. smoothly as you put in your blueprint. That's well played by Gilchrist. It's just as well that Stephen Fleming was uh, pretty slow to respond to Astle's call because it was the wrong call. That's why. Yes, I've been impressed with Gilchrist. There's been a lot of talk in the media about his selection ahead of uh, Healy. And I think I also saw in the paper uh, this morning or yesterday morning where he was just asking people to give him a chance, give him a fair go. He shouldn't be reading the media if he's uh, going to start thinking about that. And he certainly shouldn't be uh, answering any loaded questions that might be tossed his way. All he's got to do is go out there and do his job. Good to 45 on the board now. It's, uh, McGrath only bowl four overs in that uh, very bright beginning for New Zealand. 32 taken from those four. We won't take any more runs uh, for that. One of the anomalies of uh, this game is that the batsman will never run. Well, I'd say never. I don't know, one or two to do it, actually. A raised eyebrow or two. Um, but they won't run if it's uh, come off their body or the bat. However, if it goes to the boundary, it's four. That's the one they've completed. One of, the, one of the things that did happen when the fellow did that to us uh, once, Wally Grout, who had quite an acid sense of humour at times, <laughs> the, uh, the guy had the ball bounce off his bat. We weren't sure if he deliberately nudged it away. At any rate, they ran another two. And Wally stood up, took his gloves off and clapped him and said, delightful shot, best one you've played so far. Oh. One for 146. Astel on 66, Fleming 40. Uh, Steve Waugh will be intent now on closing things down, but he probably can't do it with Warren and Harvey because he needs to keep them to the end, the last uh, seven overs. Mark Ward's had 23 taken from four. Dale's had 26 taken from four. Oh, no. Over. One for 146. Consulting Warren because Warren is vice captain. Former captain and former vice captain no longer in the side. That's Mark Taylor and Ian Healy. No shortage of leaders. There's been no shortage of uh, headaches at the moment either. Piece of work by the vice captain. Yes, and what uh, will be in the back of their minds throughout all these little conferences is that uh, Australia is staring down the barrel of a fairly healthy run chase later in the evening. They'll also be conscious of the fact that South Africa found it very tough 
to get to 225 last night. Got him. The partnership is broken. Andy Bickle has done it with Astral trying to steer the ball away from Shane Warren at short mid wicket. And that was very, very badly needed by Australia. It's two for 146 now with Astral out for a splendid 66. Now, a good piece of bowling. I think they know here in Australia that Astral likes to free the arms on the offside, so they've kept them pinned down on, on, on the onside, leg stump line. And in the end, he just lifts it away. Warren takes the catch quite comfortably, so a big breakthrough. It's 2 4, 146. So, next to Shane Warren, we're going to have any big ones. Very good young batsman coming to the crease now. Played well yesterday for 86 in the game against South Africa. Did well in the tests against Australia. Craig McMillan. And he comes out at uh, 2 for 146. Fleming is on 40. Bill Laurie's in the commentary box. And alongside him is Ian Chappell. It's good effort by Andy Bickle here. Well, just moving off the seam of fraction. He just worked it straight to Shane Warne, who's got a very good pair of hands. That brings uh, Craig McMillan to the pitch, but uh, he tied him up, didn't give him too much width. A little chip shot there, straight to Warren. Big ball first up, and well played by McMillan. Yes, he absolutely stunned that one, the batsman been quite a few Yorkers even at this early stage in the innings Ian Harvey uh, bowled the ball uh, right up in the block hole during his spell and did it pretty consistently to slow the New Zealand scoring at a time when they looked like getting out of hand Ian Harvey and Shane Warne responsible for slowing them down after that uh, very good start Well done by Bickle, good fielding. Craig McMillan, man of the match yesterday. Had a fine 86. Bickle enjoying this, and it's great to see a player enjoying his cricket. It's been a nice, tidy spell. 3.5 overs, 1 for 16. Look at Maiden, two for one, four, six. Just a reminder to Adelaide viewers that this telecast is live all day. And that's great for the people that couldn't get into the Adelaide Oval. Which it's going to be a good match. They'll be chasing some about 250 plus the Australians if New Zealanders bet out the last 20 overs in good style. Conditions are ideal. Nope. Stephen Fleming's got a bit of work to do here now. He's been there for a while. 56 balls. He's uh, well set. They need a boundary or two, New Zealand. The one thing they have achieved, uh, if They've got Nathan Astle back into some uh, some good form, and Stephen Fleming, the captain, now starting to uh, find some good form. 
but uh, the Australians have succeeded in bringing that run rate down quite a lot they've got it below five now I must admit uh, I was a little surprised when Chris Cairns didn't come in at the fall of the second wicket Chris Cairns yesterday batted at number three after New Zealand had lost an early wicket and uh, looks there as though he's uh, quite relaxed I'm assuming that's his uh, legs up on top there and uh, Chris Cairns not padded up and hasn't got the he's got the t-shirt on it's a bit close if he hits oh. run throw. they'll pick up the extra run no they won't Norm going too far through Mark Wall, the fieldsman, he gathers it, and uh, you'll notice that there's very little time from the moment he gathers the ball to getting rid of it. And if he'd have made the throw uh, on target, Craig, Craig McMillan was gone. And a five inside the circle for McMillan, who hasn't scored. Three on the offside, two on the on. Steve Wall trying to keep it tight. He's off the mark with a nice push to Whitey Smith off this field, but no run conceded. Harvey the fieldsman. I say, uh not only am I surprised that uh, Chris Cairns didn't come in at number four, I'm even more surprised that he's not padded up ready to come in next. No, no. Just two runs off the over. It's two for one for eight. shot into the gap it's been a very good effort by the Australian bowlers to check the run rate on their way to a fire and about seven runs per over and it was uh, Warren and Harvey that really uh, did the job and then Bickles chipped in with a good spell here picking up the wicket Warren one for 26 Harvey none for 20 after seven Well taken a wide called. That was a very good take by Adam Gilchrist because of, I think it landed in the footmarks. And not only did he have to uh, go heading down leg side, but the ball hit the footmarks and seemed to uh, bounce in the air a little. Bounced very awkwardly for him. So that was an excellent take by Adam Gilchrist. time with the ball in touch we we'll try and hit over the top they need to break free here in New Zealand they've got a great start so Fleming in particular start reading from the front now it's been a good innings of 41 and uh, amazingly to me Roger Tooze is the next man uh, padded up he's certainly not uh, a noted hitter of the ball he's more of a worker an accumulator of runs I would have thought Chris Keynes uh, needs to be in there fairly soon. It's worn, but it's a good single. Nicely, Jay does not hit too hard to short cover. Obviously, the uh, New Zealand side have decided that uh, this period is, is a time for just pushing the ball into the gap, taking ones and twos. And perhaps uh, once McMillan's been there and had a bit of a sighter, he may decide to try and hit over the top. He persists into the gap, they get two here. 12 over since they've hit a boundary. And so they've got wickets in hand. They're 
pacing themselves well, but you just get the feeling that this is a very good pitch. And very true, good bounce today. The ball coming onto the bat. Nice use of the wrists there by Craig McMillan. Just flicking that ball around behind square, knowing that uh, if he places it around about 45 degrees, he'd get it between the two outfielders and pick up two. Good wrist work. Full throw by Warren. Well backed up by Stephen Walk. He's found uh, Adam Gilchrist heading to the stumps and like uh, an Australian rules footballer, you need to throw the ball uh, in front of the man, not behind the man. Gilchrist was unable to back up. Eight runs off the over from Bickle. It's two for one, five, six. to backward point no run it's a lovely walk down through the trees and the grasslands across the river with the bridge there and turn left into the memorial drive tennis courts and the adelaide Open. Gone for it, doesn't beat mid wicket. He's a dangerous player, and Millen's has got no fear. Young guy having a very good tour. This is a confident player and a very powerful striker. The Australians uh, doing a good job of defending at the moment. The fielding has been good and the bowling quite accurate. Bold, Didn't give him any width. Bit of a charge there from McMillan, but McGrath was on the job, kept it nice and straight, didn't drop short. There's a good comeback by Glenn McGrath. He took a bit of stick in the early uh, spell. Nathan Astle really getting after him. But uh, brought back for his second spell. He's doing uh, an excellent job. One for four from 2.3 in this spell. Shout to cut it back. I don't think there was any bat there. Half a shot from McGrath. It looks as though uh, McMillan is being asked to be the one to get a move on. And Stephen Fleming doing the job of uh, the sheet anchor man. not giving him any room McMillan is the man uh, he likes to hit over the mid wicket area about uh, wide mid on mid wicket area now Steve Ward just pushing long on back as we get near the end of the over one ball remaining in this over Nice tidy over. over. Maiden, two for one, five, six. Chips out in the air and safely. That's the first boundary maybe for a long, long time. Yes, into the gutter it goes. 14 overs. 
Just a little flick of the wrist there from Stephen Fleming. And I think it's only fair that he should uh, help his younger uh, teammate get things moving. Don't think it can all be left to McMillan. So Fleming deciding that it's time for him to get a move on. And much as uh, McMillan did at the other end, he just placed that ball by just rolling the wrists, getting it away from the mid-on fieldsman. Single down to McGrath, third man. To give uh, Stephen Fleming a tremendous boost in confidence if he gets a big score here. He's on 47 at the moment. He's elevating himself to number three. He's done a good job. side leg by that's been the plan for uh, Andrew Bickle a little bit of in swing trying to get it up there in the block hole moving in towards middle and leg and he's done it pretty successfully Got rid of uh, Nathan Astle with that strategy Tommy finds mid-wicket. It's Mark War. It's a bit of a while before the storm here, one feels. As far as New Zealanders are concerned, they've got eight wickets in hand. They really need to start pushing on. And they'll leave it all to the last five or six overs. This is the 34th over. Doesn't beat. Short cover. Shane Warne being used a lot inside the circle now that he's vice-captain. Often in the mid-wicket position on this occasion with the left-hander on strike at short cover. He's done a good job in there, picked up one catch already. Six off the over, it's two for 162. Some magnificent photographs. It's two for 162. There's the call. And after the drink, surely New Zealand will push on in the 35th over. Yes, they had things going very, very nicely uh, after that start. Good partnership between Matthew Horn and Nathan Astle. And it looked as though they were going to uh, post a, a target, something like uh, the target that they posted or that they set Australia in the quarter-final of the World Cup. That was at Madras, I think, score of around about 280 on that occasion, which Australia got. It's gone for it. Over, long on. He's a good hitter of the ball, this lad. He's got a lot of common sense with his approach to hitting. It's straight through the line. Yes, one of the reasons why he is such a good hitter, there's no uh, great effort there. He just plays a normal cricket shot, except that he picks it up from just short of a length, and just with the flick of the wrist virtually, and it's a very powerful player, very strong forearms. He was able to loft it within just a few metres of the boundary. Long on goes back now. And uh, finally thought that uh, he had to come up into the circle. Adam Dale, but he's now been sent back to fine leg. Yep. It's gone again this time. He chips it on the ground. I think they found a very good player at not only the one-day level, at the test level as well, and Craig McMillan has got a wonderful temperament. He uses his own method, and it's very successful. He immediately picked up the advantage of that lofted shot uh, with Long on back on the boundary. and was able to just push an easy single. Suddenly, after two balls, you've got uh, five runs. In fact, make that three balls, and it's looking like a good over. Charge, didn't quite time it. 
Fleming hasn't got the natural skill of uh, McMillan. He's a bit stiff in the forearms as a skipper, but he's doing a great job. He's moved to 48. Yes, there's not much uh, cock of the wrists actually in his back lift, and perhaps that's where uh, that's what makes him into such an arm player. But he is a very good timer of the ball, Stephen Fleming. They're pacing themselves pretty well without uh, many boundaries. They're working on the last final overs. Just lost the two wickets. It was a terrific start. The first uh, eight, eight overs, uh, in fact, first nine overs. Tremendous stuff from Astle and Horn. They really got after Glenn McGrath and Adam Dale. It's gone, could be out. The man's coming around, he's going down his throat. He's getting under as a Bevan. He's running and he's caught it. He hasn't caught it. He's dropped as he went to ground. It's Stephen Udo, in fact. Well, he looked like he had it and hit the ground. It must have come out. Eight off the over. There's plenty of action here at the Adelaide Alberts. Two for 170. Well, it was a long run for Michael DiVenuto. And uh, there's not a lot of wind there, but the little bit of wind there is would have been dragging the ball away from him. And uh, ball also loses a lot of its shine. It can be hard to pick up. And he had it in the hands there. But once he hit the ground, jolted the ball out. Good effort. He judged it pretty well. Perhaps didn't quite get it properly in the hands, and uh, once he hit the ground, there was no chance. So a life there for Craig McMillan, and New Zealand will appreciate that. The ground's humming. Yep. That's a thick edge racing around towards the boundary. McGrath does well, but brings up the 54, Stephen Fleming. That's a good effort. He's been struggling for touch. Came in at number three, he's done a good job. Well, that was the good thing about uh, the move with the captain coming in at number three. Even though he was out of form, it showed that he had the courage to go in there and set the example and also confront his tormentor in Shane Warne. So that's been a gutsy performance from the captain. It's nicely timed in the mid wicket. It's into the gutter for four. They've lifted the tempo since the drink break. Catch isn't it? Never easy. That was a good shot there from Fleming. Found the gap nicely at mid wicket. So nicely placed. The timing was there. Short boundary. It's good running. The uh, Outfield catch is never easy, as Ian Chappell said, the ball was just drifting away with the breeze, actually. The breeze coming from the cathedral across the ground. Divanito had it well covered, the eyes were on the ball. He gets himself in pretty good position, got the sunglasses on, but then it goes through the hands, down the arm, and finally out when he hits the ground. I think McGrath thought he'd caught it, as I did too. And then he realises that it's gone to ground. the gap happy with the single yes the other player who thought it had been caught was Adam Gilchrist you see him start to charge towards the fieldsman and uh, in fact not surprisingly it was the bowler who realized first that it had gone down Adam Gilchrist was still on the charge you see Gilchrist there in the background number 18 he's uh, he thinks it's been caught but the bowler suddenly he realizes the bad news Probably even expressed his feelings. Pick all around the wicket. Fleming drives down the onside. Four running by McMillan. He should have been looking for two. I think the captain is having a bit to say as well, or having a good look at least. Is to be fair to McMillan, he had to come back to his crease, uh, make sure the ball got past the bowler before he could leave. And 
that probably made him think that there was only ever going to be one there but he said he didn't run it very hard Hit him. Oh, doesn't hit them. It's plenty of action. Nine off the over. Two for 179. And uh, really, that one uh, off the leading edge, trying to get it away on the onside, which is Fleming's way. He loves chipping the ball away into the onside field. At uh, last over, we saw him play a lovely shot there. Anything that's up on leg stump is going to disappear. But this was a little risky. Just watch, uh, tries to work it away there off the front edge, and that could have gone straight back to McGraw quite easily. Millen now on strike. He's got 15. Driven through the offside field. The white ball getting a little dull. This uh, pitch is quite firm. It's very firm, in fact, so it's quite severe on the ball. It tends to uh, knock the whiteness, certainly the outer coat, off the ball, and it goes very grey, almost the colour of the pitch. They're just pitching outside leg stump, not uh, not by much. Just a matter of a, a centimeter or two. But, uh, no chance of an over W. 181 on the board now. We're into the 37th over, so we're in a sense halfway towards finishing the innings. Halfway with uh, just, uh, about 14 overs to go. Seven of which will be bowled by Warren and Harvey. I would reckon that uh, if the Australians can keep New Zealand down to 250, then they'll have done a very good job. Still eight wickets in hand. New Zealand will uh, be looking for 260, I would think. So there's not much in, it's going to be a tight match. But if they can keep them down to 250, then the Australians will have done well. Good straight drive. Deep mid-offs there. Once again, Divanuto coming into the action. And McGraw just trying to flick that one through his legs at the stumps to try and catch the batsman by surprise. There it goes. In the air, just over the infield. Back for the second, so that'll make it six off the over. It's two for 185. two from four overs then came back and bowled well in his second spell and, uh, just conceding 18 or five overs and then that drop catch which uh, didn't please him very much just have another look at this uh, drop catch he did well to get across here but watch the ball go through his hands and then nearly lodges in his elbow there just uh, up against his chest but uh, he had no idea where it had gone Now oh, this has got to be out. Yes, got him straight down mid off throat. No trouble at all. Well, Harvey wasn't going to drop that one. So Bickle gets some reward for keeping the ball relatively well pitched up. And uh, that was a nice crisp hit, but straight to the fieldsman. 
So Fleming out caught by Harvey. This is how it happened. It was a good free stroke from uh, Fleming, but didn't quite time it. And also he's hitting it uh, down to the longest part of the ground, even though the boundaries have been brought into 90 metres. It's 3 for 186. So here's Harvey, a catch early bit of the Melbourne women. Stephen Fleming, 61 from 77 to the right. So Chris Cairns, 55 from 54 balls yesterday, played a gem of an innings, included some uh, very powerful hitting. He's striding out to the centre now, and uh, this will be entertaining if he gets going. Just uh, give you a quick look at that wicket again. This is from behind the batsman. You can see he just chipped it up nicely, and uh, it went straight to Harvey. Hardly had to move. So the end of uh, a good innings from Fleming. 61 of 77 balls and you can see there that he knew straight away that uh, he succeeded only in hitting it straight to the fieldsman it's the lovely scene from the bradman stand looking down the ground to the scoreboard far end He's very powerfully built, uh, tall man. You can see his arms there, uh, really strong. Ooh, and uh, that one's got straight to extra cover like a rocket. There's been some good timing of the ball out there. Mark Wall was the one in the firing line. stump and once again the sweeper will come into play will they chance the second they've decided against it that's a good throw well done and I think that may well have affected a run out that was Blewett who came in there sweeping on the onside and uh, a wonderful throw to Bickle who was right alongside the stumps and he had the bails off in a flash we need a little bit of experience to play here at Adelaide Oval because of uh, the shortness of the boundaries on the sides it's not always easy to get two runs hello what's he done to his throwing arm That was a powerful throw and slightly off balance. For two runs in a wicket. Good over from Bickle. Three for 187. the onside and there goes a little chip straight away beautifully timed it's got Divanuto charging away will he make it he's uh, got it yes and uh, back they come well that's good running good running and good relay throw the batsman would have been in no danger with the normal throw but suddenly because of the relay from uh, Divanuto the man who has gone out to pick it up there and a good throw from Mark Moore 
wasn't struggling so much, but would have been no chance at all without the relay. Yes, yeah, so just getting back to uh, that uh, beautiful shot yesterday, played uh, against South Africa by Cairns. Just have a look at this. Losing to the bowler, he just flicked that from way outside off stump, and it uh, looked as if it was never going to come down. Wonderful timing. When his father uh, gave Dennis Lilly such stick at the MCG that day, hitting six sixes, he was using a bat that's associated with the one he's got there, but not quite the same. Oh, he's caught well caught. Yes, that's the end of him. He's trying to do it again. That's a big deflection and very well caught by Gilchrist. That ball deviated a long way off the bat of Cairns. So uh, today wasn't about to be his day. Good bowling from the drop. Cairns tried to whip it away to the onside. Thick deflection and it was caught at about 2 o'clock. And this is McGrath's last over, so that's a vital wicket. If Cairns uh, could have seen him off, would have made a big difference to New Zealand's chances here. The duck goes past Cairns, then comes back to have a look at him. And it's uh, four for one night. So Adam Perori, right hand up. 77 uh, matches he's played, average of 32 and a higher score of 108. 68.5 is his strike rate. So, and uh, what's more, he's played pretty well so far on this tour. He's a busy cricketer and uh, he's done pretty well. I think with the bat behind the wicket as well. Bill Christ would have thought this was being hit away on the onside, so his first movement will have been there, and he's had to get across, not quite to where first slip would have been, but he had to cover a considerable amount of ground. And he was on his way to the leg side, and then came back. It's taken neatly. They got off to a wonderful start, the New Zealanders, but... Uh then the brakes were very definitely put on by Warren and Harvey down here. Got it back going again, and uh, that is quite a good partnership. But then again, a little dip. Once again, goes on and now with the wickets falling. It's just dropped back a little bit, so it's been a, a bit of a roller coaster ride. Three runs and a wicket. Four for 190. muscle problem that he's got when he cools down so they've decided to replace him so he's off the ground New Zealand continuing now they try to get up to five and over got it to 4.87 well, for them to reach that 250 mark I was talking about or the 260 at which they'll be aiming 250 will be what the Australians will be looking at it needs McMillan to be there at the end. He's the key to New Zealand's chances. It's the other interesting aspect of the uh, the Australian 
performance in the field is going to be to see what War does with his bowlers at the end of the innings. Now, he's got a few overs left of Warren, and he's got some overs left for Harvey. The two of them bowled pretty well. Those are the six bowlers used today. the single there no tremendous urgency in uh, running the first one there well he's got uh, seven overs left for Warren and Harvey Harvey's got three and Warren four so I'd reckon that when the first of those seven overs comes Warren should bowl it that they should bowl out between them should bowl out the innings now whether Steve War will want to do that's another matter Back to the bowler and uh, quite a chirpy bickle today. He's, uh, looks as if he's enjoyed himself out there, catching it and threatening to hurl it back at the stumps. Figures of two for 42. He's into his ninth over now. Once again, up in the block hole, so he's doing pretty well in getting the ball up and straight. Can't ask for much more than that. extra cover two off the over four for one ninety two is making he's uh, clearly going to keep Harvey and probably even warn may well be that the two of them end up finishing off at opposite ends so Dale who's got plenty of overs he's only bowled four well it should be uh, Dale to bowl two overs from the cathedral end Bickle has got one to go to finish his ten so that would be the logical thing to me. And once Dale's finished his two, then Harvey will bowl out three from the cathedral end, and uh, Warren will bowl four from the city end. Whether that um, will be the planning from Steve Waugh is another matter. Building has been pretty sharp today. Just one or two little blemishes early on when the Australians were under pressure. It's interesting to watch them uh, when the pressure was being applied in the early part of the innings. But they've done well. They've come back after that dual spell from uh, Warren and Harvey. Oh, that was close. Stayed down as well, and the keeper did well. Hillcrest moving quickly. Is that a good game? Took the bales off once, thought he had a stumping. Uh, didn't work out that way. Just watch this one. Stays down a little bit. And uh, he has to move quickly to his left. So Macmillan on strike on 22 off the 33 balls he's faced so far. He'll be looking for some boundaries. And uh, that's the way to do it, to chip it away. It's running away again down to Divanuto down there at uh, wide long on. It's not easy out in the outfield when uh, you're coming towards the end of an innings. A lot of hard, fast running to be done. You've got to keep your balance and keep your head as well. And they've left even Nuto a little wide now. The place to hit him is uh, going to be straight. If you want to get some runs now, he's going to hit it straight down the ground because uh, there's a big gap at mid-on. Yep. Once again, square. This time, it's Bevan that comes in and he's throw spot on target. And that uh, gave Bevan's shoulder a bit of hurry up as well. We've really seen uh, Blewett making one throw that uh, worried him. Now Bevan, as soon as he's got rid of the ball, is just trying to loosen up.
Dale's last ball of the fifth over, of his fifth over. So six runs from that one. Four for 198. Centre. That's the uh, North Adelaide golf course. Public golf course, and apparently they've got some uh, big plans for it. Rod Marsh was saying yesterday. There's uh, marquees and tents there. Big uh, luncheons taking place at the break of innings. Right up there again, Roy. One has to say that Bickle's done his stuff here today. It brings up the 200. And Bickle keeping it right up and straight, rather the way Harvey did early on. There's nothing much the batsman can do. They certainly can't get under the ball and uh, hit sixes. They can't uh, flick it away over the ends field. It makes it a lot more difficult. So he's uh, found himself a nice groove. is going to be uh, very interesting because they've got wickets in hand and normally if the side batting has got some runs and wickets in hand then uh, there's really going to be a flurry one way or the other you're going to have to really try and cut cut loose villain and he said that is a very good chipper of the ball he could actually play his normal game he's on strike now oh and he had no idea where that had gone he was trying to get that one away to square leg and it's ended up uh, with Di Venuto, third man. Perori on three and on strike. the inside edge you'll get one will he come back and risk it the second no he won't good throw again over the bales well that uh, little arm and shoulder problem he had momentarily doesn't seem to have posed him any more problems he's got rid of it quickly he's given it the underarm flick from there Well, that's a good shot. That's uh, the chip shot that I was talking about. He plays it so well, right into the gap, and that's gone to the fence for four. So, lovely shot, that one from McMillan. That's his second boundary of this innings. Beautifully picked up, but it's not quite what the captain would have wanted to see. Uh, virtually a half volley, round about uh, middle and leg at this stage of the game, with uh, Bickle coming right to the end of his permitted 10 overs. That's a good over for New Zealand. 10 runs from it. And the New Zealand score now 4 for 208. So 10 overs, Randy Bickle, 2 52. It's a wide down the leg side by Miles. And that one's uh, gone straight down the ground. It's pretty well hit too, and it's going to go all the way. That's a good shot. He smashed that one straight down the ground. So they've started to loosen their shoulders up now. So 
A lovely clean hit. Dale has uh, not had much of a chance to get his uh, hands up there. He's seen a few of those over the years that have caused injuries to bowlers. Now, after this over, there will be seven overs to go. And it should be Shane Warne at the City End for four overs and Ian Harvey at the Cathedral End taking over from Adam Dale. Well, the three overs to, with Warne to take it up to the end. Miss yes, and uh, those of you young cricketers who play limited overs cricket there's a misfield in comes the throw and uh, that's good running they were waiting for uh, the slightest indication that the ball wasn't taken cleanly and they were ready for the second run and as soon as it bobbed out out of divinuto's hands well he was actually out in his hands he was about to throw it and let it go they were off for their second so uh, as richie benno said there have been a few little mishaps in the field Generally, the standard's been pretty good, but uh, Divanuto dropped one and fumbled that one. There have uh, also been quite a lot of uh, extra balls bowled, 13 in all. Eight wides all up, and then the rest no balls. So um, that's made the job a little tougher for them. That's well fielded. Desperate stuff. I think the crowd thought that was a catch. He's yes, watching Harvey and Warren bowl. If you're youngsters and you play in one day cricket, uh, you want to take some notice because uh, Harvey bowling his medium paces uh, bowls him very well at the end of an innings. Warren, of course, a uh, wonderful bowler of leg spinners. So it's going to be an interesting little period now. Nine runs from that over. It's four for 217. We're Shane Warne. Complete uh, his stint. And uh, he'll be bowling for the rest of the innings from down here unless he gets some fearful stick, which is unlikely. And uh, down the other end, it's going to be Ian Harvey. In the commentary box, Bill Laurie. And with him, Rod Marsh. Thank you, Tony Gregg. Good afternoon, all. Well, the two right batsmen at the crease, McMillan and Ferrari, play Shane Warne fairly well. McMillan, once again, doing a great job. He's on 41 of 44 balls faced. Ferrari on strike. Warne cuts, doesn't beat backward point. Shane Warne did the job in his first spell. Along with Ian Harvey, put the brakes on, picked up the first wicket. Warne for 31. Oh, beautifully bowled, but gets through uh, maybe a bye or a leg bye. Leg bye called. This should be a very interesting little session, Ronnie Marsh. Yes, it should, Bill. Both of these guys are going to go after Shane Warne. I think the method that uh, Adam Perore is going to use is the sweep shot. We've seen him do that in the test matches. A bit of turn for Warren. McMillan, on the other hand, I think will try and come down the, the ground at him. He'll, uh, he'll try and hit him straight and a long way. Uses his feet, gets out and hits the ball, this young fellow. He's gone for it. Man out there. Misses it. Blew it. Not sure whether it carried. I don't think he picked it up to eight. Catch it was a cry from Warren. Let us see where that carried. Well, it is very difficult. Just sitting up here in the commentary box, it's uh, it's time to look at the monitors, not at them actually deliver the ball because uh, you just go by the the shot. You can't actually see the ball in the air. Catch this time. Harvey will catch it. He's got a good pair of hands. In he comes. Yes, Warren's done the job. Well caught by Harvey. That's the wicket the Australians needed. Well, that's the second catch for Ian Harvey in that position. 
It just took him a while to figure out how far that ball was going to carry as well. Off the bat, it is very difficult to see it. Uh, but once he picked it up, he was never going to drop it. Australian rules footballer. And uh, the turn actually beat him there. Flight and turn. And he didn't middle it. Straight up in the air. And once Harvey picked it up, it was all over for young Craig McMillan. A pretty good 43 again, however. And the fifth New Zealand wicket falls to score 220 in the 43rd over. Warren continues. Tempered sweep. Well, for Rory, Roger Toos is the non striker. The new batsman number 87 on his back. At a strike rate of almost 70. These are vital overs for New Zealand. Australians uh, doing a very good job. It's well struck to deep cover. Four and a wicket for Warren. Once again, he does the job, the great leg spinner. and. This time it was Harvey at uh, long on. They should be caught these, but he's a fine athlete, Harvey. He's a good mover. Spin did him. He probably should have hit down mid-off. Trying to hit a little bit against the spin, got under it. And Harvey came in and uh, never really looked like missing it. Judged it to perfection. Well balanced. End of a very good knock by Craig McMillan for 43. Yeah, I think there was just an anxious moment for Ian Harvey here, Bill. He just took him a while to pick up just how far that ball was going to carry. Then he nearly ran under it. Under it. But once he balanced, he was pretty happy uh, getting it to his chest. He shouldn't drop that, and, and he didn't. But I just don't... Responsible ability here for Ferrari as Harvey comes into bowl. He bowled a magnificent first spell. That's well struck. Hits the stumps. No result. Could have been a run out again. And Harvey in the Sydney get his hand on that straight drive, put on the stumps. Roger Tuso, I don't think, was going too far out of his crease. Oh, I think he might have been out of his crease, but I don't think Harvey got uh, a touch on the ball. <laughs> he, he did it in Sydney and he didn't get a touch on it, but there was just a wry smile from Harvey as if to say, uh, You just stay where you are, Roger, because I'll get you. What a major, well taken. Gilchrist doing a great job. Always hard when you're going to the offside. Probably would have run away for a two or three. Well, it helps being uh, his height in this situation. You see Gilchrist wait initially to the right and then coming back to the left. That's a very good take. That's well run. Adam Ferrari, the informed cricketer. And he's probably the key here now to... A big score. This is the 45th over. The Australians have contained them fairly well after a great start when I was 77 and about 11 overs. Very good effort by Warren and in Harvey to contain the situation for Stephen Moore. It's a very good batting pitch. Any score around about 250 will be a good one. Roger Toos coming in and having a bit of a walk, and that's fair enough. Well, they haven't got much time to be looking now. It's uh, five wickets in hand, and really your job coming in at number seven in a one-day game is make sure you get at least one run a ball. Oh. Not sure that was a slow one. What happened there? Deceived him. Yes, it was a slow one. <laughs> 
He had absolutely no idea about that whatsoever. He's played his shot and the ball's not there. One run off the over from Harvey. What a great spell of bowling it's been. It's five for two, two, two. Bold. Well bowled. The Australians just tightening the screws a bit here on New Zealand. They'll be very disappointed if they don't make 250 plus. This is the 46th over. It was a wonderful partnership there early on. Four of a wicket and they rebuilt again. And then some big overs, New Zealand. It's well put away, but just the single. Well, you can bet your life that uh, the Australians are going to struggle here tonight as well. South Africa only got 224. Uh, only chased 224 yesterday and they couldn't get them and I reckon the New Zealanders uh, are feeling pretty comfortable at the moment any runs they get now is more than they got yesterday and uh, I reckon they'll be quite happy with it I disagree I think it's a 240 plus pitch I think the Australians will, uh, their method will be different than the South Africans Di Venuto on the top order will come out with all guns blazing this evening that's why they'll pick them aside the young Lions and they've got a job to do so you reckon it's a better pitch than it was yesterday Yes, I do. I think it's a good pitch. I, I've seen nothing to uh, make me feel uncomfortable as a batsman or a wicket keeper. The bounce has been good carrying through to Gilchrist. It's worn though. He's uh, just a super bowler. 7.2 overs, 2 for 30. Sweeps and gets the single. The advantage of. Uh, who has been there is he's a left-handed a worn. He's got any sort of touch at all. He can pull him with the spin on the onside. He's really got to go from now. They can't afford to waste deliveries at this stage. They need boundaries, New Zealand. Catches the cry. Whoops. He defended well. I don't think he picked it up. Well, that time he was really looking for that ball. In the end, I think he's very happy just to stop it. Well, judging by the uh, the mirth there, <laughs> I think he's very happy indeed. Maybe he needs a pair of those uh, lenses and the sunglasses that brighten things up, brighten the ball up particularly. Sweeps again. There's three men on the onside for the left-hander, just a single. They're defending well, the Australians. Not giving them too much width. Almost the end of the 46th over. The mind flashes back to Alan Lamb getting 17 off and over from Bruce Reed. Those days seem to be gone with the, the final overs when the batsmen really take after the bowlers. Four off the over from Warren. It's five for 226. Oh, he's got him, has he? No, it didn't carry back. What sort of shot was that? He didn't seem to know where it was. Maybe it was a slower delivery again. Roger Twos has got two slow deliveries from uh, Ian Harvey now, and he's had no idea whatsoever. Well, these dot balls, I can't believe this. I really can't. He's really got to go after him. You know he's bowling straight, you know he's bowling full with a bit of change of pace. Ah! Asked a question, it goes off the pad down the third man, just the leg by. I think Roger Tuss would be very glad to get the non-strikers end. Yes, he headed back for a second run then, Roger Tuss. But uh, I think Perore wasn't interested in any way, shape or form. He's had enough deliveries and done nothing with them, which puts a bit of pressure on Adam Perore now. He basically has to hit a boundary. Ah! 
Got him. Well, that's what happens when you get tied up at one end. Superb performance by Young and Harvey. He's bowled beautifully in Sydney. I think he's bowling better today. Maybe that was a slower ball again, but he's not that for Rory. The danger, better. And the Australian's doing well at 6 for 227. Well, I think uh, Adam Perore can uh, lay some of the blame on uh, Roger Toos for that. Toos just didn't get off strike. We had three or four deliveries at him. And uh, Harvey, with his first slower ball to Adam Perore, completely confused him. Tried to sweep it and uh, got rock and rolled all over for Adam Perore. Nine off 23 balls, six for 227 in the 47th over. Chris Harris batted beautifully yesterday for 52 not out. Comes in with just a few overs remaining. Me and Harvey, what a wonderful effort by this young guy. 8.4 overs, 1 for 21. He's uh, bowling straight. He's got a good change of pace. It's a full toss and he works the way, Harris. Just a reminder to viewers in South Australia, we're going live tonight. It's a wonderful thing. Full house. So this match will be a good run chase this evening. And I think the Australians have done a great job if they keep uh, New Zealand under 250. Bowling. Nicely struck down to long off. Three and a wicket for Harvey. And six for 229. <laughs> so the Australians getting back in this match is Harvey at the back of the hand he went for it or he clean bowled fair enough had to hit a boundary or two a good change of pace they must not be watching his wrist you can see that clearly come out of the back of the hand took the off stump bowled him for nine Harvey has done a fantastic job warm it ready to bowl from the members end Big shout, that's very, very close. No, says umpire here. They're running, no, they're not. Warren can't believe it. Big shout for LBW. Daryl Hare, a very experienced umpire, said not out. Well, I think that was the one that wasn't turning from Shane Warren, going straight on with the arm. I'll have a look at if it did turn. Well, just a little bit. Maybe turn from outside off stump and probably would have bowled him, but well down the track. And that's what he gave him not out for. No run here. We're talking about Ian Harvey's performance. When he come into the attack. It was none for 68. It's over here. It's with Harvey come into the attack. That one there. It's gone for it. Catch it's a call. It's in the gap. It's four. Oh, that's a good shot. Roger two sweeping and splitting backward square leg and mid wicket. Well, that is picking the gap. And uh, let me tell you, that's a very, very difficult thing to do. In fact, I think he just swung at that. And it was more luck than uh, good management. But you've got to give him credit for the shot. He hit it right in the middle of the bat. Going for it again. This time as a fieldsman out there. Gets it on the bounce, knocks it down, just a single. As we're talking about Ian Harvey, what job he did. Can he come on? Can he come on? It's none for 67. Harvey. That's where he came on there. 
and uh, that really slowed that massive stand down. And since then, it's been fairly consistent, but Harvey and Warren, the ones that have contained New Zealand, well, they could have been looking at 270 or 280. Harris received in fight there by Warren. It's not easy when you come out a new batsman. Harris on one and Warren's just about got it right. Five off the over from Warren. Six for two, three, four. Harvey. He gets it somewhere, maybe a bottom edge. Wait for the call from up by Terry Prue. There's a run off the bat. Harvey keeping the ball nice and full and straight. Well, this has been uh, called as a chance, and let me tell you, they're very hard, those. Harris into the gap. It's gone for four. That is a fine shot. That ball very hard to pick up off the bat. Chris Harris, 52 not out yesterday, bowled well. Beautiful draw, just a bit of width there. Beat the short cover and it raced away for four. This time he chips it to Warren at mid-wicket. So Harris doing the job here, putting the bat on the ball. Can't afford a dot ball if you're New Zealand supporter. Pad, bat, whatever, but scamper through for the singles. Maybe the odd boundary. Six for 240. Take that well, that's a big one. There she goes. Way, way over. That's what they needed. Very well timed. Roger Tours picked that one up and hit it right off the meat of the bat. You could hear it clunk and away it went. Well, one slow ball too many from uh, Ian Harvey. Roger Tours actually got hold of this one. He picked it. Swung at it and away into the bleachers. This time he places it nicely. They'll probably go for two here. They do. It's a good over for New Zealand. 14 so far off the 49th over. The only time they've got on top of Ian Harvey. Gone again. This time it's finer. 16 off the over. A very good one for New Zealand. At six for 250. Chris Harris on strike to Shane Warren. There's three men in the deep on the onside. The left-handed batsman. Full toss. Just a single out to deep cover. Roger, two's the hero here for New Zealand at the moment. He didn't look like laying a bat on Ian Harvey, then all of a sudden picked up the slower ball, whacked him for six, and has raced to 19 off just 17 balls. He's gone again, he's cracked at the mid wicket, that could well be four more. In fact, that's six more. Way she went, he got hold of it. Roger Toos pumping the gloves in the air. Six for 257. Well, I don't think Shane Warne can believe anyone can hit him from two foot outside off stump over mid-wicket for six. And that's exactly what's happened. The wider it was, the harder it went. And he's middled a couple of these. Let me tell you, that's right off the middle of the bat. Full well, pitch, go is the call. Probably come back for the second. No, they're happy with the single, which leaves Harris on strike. Three balls remaining. He's enjoying it, isn't he? Why not? He's raced to 26. And there's that big over of Ian Harvey. And this 50th is not looking too good either from an Australian point of view. Harris chips that nicely. Twos have come back for the second. Oh, they won't take him on. Maybe just as well. Good throw from Bickle. At least Roger Toos on strike. Yeah, they have to bowl the wrong one. Pitch just outside off stump and get him hitting against the spin. Chip it up in the air for a wicket. The ball's outside off stump, he put him right into the bleachers, I tell you. He's 
in form is Roger. Goes again. And, and Bevan's under it. He's caught it. Yes, he has. It was going over as well. But Bevan took the catch and maybe that sixth save there could win the match for Australia later on this evening. Well caught, wasn't it? Going over the fence, well judged, and a wicket for Warren. It was well judged. Well, Roger's luck ran out. But only by a smidgen. You know, perhaps it would have hit the fence on the fall, but it was a good catch by Bevan. You always worry about that when you're uh, out there backing back into the fence, wondering whether you're going to cop a stake right in the middle of your back. Uh, but he's caught it very well indeed. So that's the end of Roger. Twos. One ball remaining, seven for 259. He had the right idea. He's had some width outside off stump. Well, I asked him to ask batsman in because the last ball to be bowled. Seven for 259. There it is. A little bit of hitting with the spin. He hit it nicely. And I think it was going over, Ronnie. It would have been very, very close. Very good mark by Bevan. Vital catch. Nicely timed. Hit on the up. Look at that. Straight through the line. Cross batted swipe. And it was really travelling. Up goes Bevan. Back, back. Up. Well caught. Harris is on strike for the final delivery. Cracks it square to Blewett. That's the over bowl. So after 50 overs, it's 7 for 260. The target for Australia will be 261. Well played, New Zealand. We we'll back the Adelaide Oval in half an hour.
261 needed for the Australians, the asking rate 5.22. And in the commentary box, Ian Chappell, and alongside him is Tony Gregg. Thank you, Richie. Yes, and uh, this is going to be lovely now. The lights will uh, be on in a moment to certainly start uh, dominating the situation here, this lovely ground. And uh, we're also going to see uh, Mark Waugh trying to dominate this New Zealand attack. He's uh, had so much experience. And have a look at that strike rate right up there, 78. So uh, it looks as if he's going to be taking strike and down the non-striker's end, Michael DiVenuto. He'll be uh, looking to cut loose here today. He's a very aggressive player. He was out cutting, caught by Jonty Rhodes in the gully in that first match against South Africa. And today he'll be hoping to get them wide of the fieldsman. Shane O'Connor will be striving for a little bit of swing with the new white ball. Whoopie bowler, the, uh, the discipline now in respect of uh, this New Zealand attack is going to be very important. So that's the scene. It's a big crowd, and uh, they're looking forward to it, I'm sure. Oh, and a little stutter there. That would have been out. That would have been out. Run out without facing a ball. There was a little stutter there. War pushed, looked up. Divanuto was coming. He stuttered just for a second, and it was a little backflip from Gully by Macmillan, just wide of the stumps. Close call. Yes, Mark Wall looks at his partner to see if he's coming. And for a moment, uh, Divanuto wasn't sure about it. When he did decide, it was a very late start, and Chris Harris uh, with the backhander very nearly threw the stumps down. Michael DiVenuto looking to uh, get things moving for Australia. Australia had a big chase against New Zealand in the quarterfinal of the World Cup, and on that occasion it was Mark Waugh who got 100 and got them home. He may well have to repeat the dose here at the Adelaide Oval. Looking um, at the fieldsmen in the gully. They've no doubt uh, done a little bit of homework on Di Venuto. They've got two slips in there for, for edges, and then they've got uh, a gully, and uh, really, I suppose, uh, the other fieldsmen now going out to cover, so he's, uh, he's at cover point. But this is the gully here. This is the one he's got to be a little careful of. It's, uh, it's, he's loved, he loves that shot. Anything just short outside off stump, he'll be going to blast it through the offside. Yes, he plays the horizontal bat shots extremely well, Michael DiVenuto. Good through the offside, and no slouch when it comes to the short stuff on the stumps, which he'll pull. And because of that, the New Zealanders have the fine leg up inside the circle and a man on the square leg boundary. A little bit of swing there and nicely played through the offside. Back for the second. Just uh, moved with that one and just started to swing out. And uh, as it went out, so he followed it and just pushed it into the gap. The hardness of the new ball showing up there as Divanuto just stroked that one gently and it raced away from the mid off fieldsman. Virtually just a defensive push. See there, Craig McMillan very quickly having to turn and get on his bike. That's wide. Fired that one down the leg side. We saw Australia uh, actually misbehave a little bit on that front. Eight, I think, in all. So I think uh, O'Connor aiming that one at about leg stump and hoping to, to swing it a little. It didn't swing, just... Continue to cross on the angle. Umpire Terry Prue decided it was a wide. Well, one advantage that uh, Michael DiVenuto has gained from that uh, firm push through the covers, they've taken the gully fieldsman out and put him now into the cover region. So that's one area, that, that gully area there, where Di Venuto may have been caught. He was caught uh, by the South Africans in that area, but he's got them out of there. Four runs from the first over. No wicket for four. 
We're calling Mr. John Peter from Windmill. John Peter from Windmill, can you contact the match office in the members area, please? Mr. John Peter from Windmill, please come to the match office immediately. Cairns has got the new ball. Try and get a breakthrough here early on. That's nice played. He's got that one right into the gap. Back for the second. Lovely placement there from Mark War. Such a good onside player. And uh, with those lovely wrists of his when he's batting, he's able to just guide the ball into the gap. Pretty good effort on that occasion because there's not much room between mid wicket and mid on. Good running. Cover fieldsman just a little deep there and war very quickly spotting that and calling for the single. match that Tony Gregg was talking about where uh, New Zealand defeated uh, England at the Adelaide Oval scoring in excess of uh, 250 and in fact scored 297 to win and one of the big contributors with the bat for New Zealand was Lance Cairns with 49 from 24 balls father of Chris Cairns the opening bowler on this occasion It's uh, a slightly short ball outside off stump, and you notice there how Di Venuto started to wind up and get ready to smash it. He tried to, didn't quite middle it. He's going through uh, the shot again. Ideal player for this ground, Michael Di Venuto. Boundary square of the wicket are uh, short, and he specialises in those horizontal bat shots. The members in the garden seats aren't safe for this man at the crease. It's anything uh, short on his body, he'll uh, try and pull away down towards uh, mid wicket, down towards the member stand area while he's batting from that end. Be uh, looking to whack it up here somewhere. Judging by a few of the empty garden seats there, there are uh, quite a few people still out the back having their uh, dinner. One of the great uh, social events on the calendar, cricket uh, at the Adelaide Oval. A lot of people enjoy themselves out the back on the lawns and the marquees. Normally uh, during a test match or a one-day international, it's uh, lunchtime. But now that they've got the lights, it's now dinner time where the socialising is done. Always hit that one, but straight to the fieldsman. Right off the meat of the bat. Three runs off the over. No wicket for seven. the uh, well it's up to the 30 plus these days so that he's got uh, good protection from the sun Not that he needs it so much now but earlier in the day quite warm here in Adelaide to know what uh, the Australian tactics are if there are any changes in the batting order if they're going to think about it Adam Gilchrist may be uh, one of the players who is uh, elevated very very good hitter of the ball Nugget Rees the man in the uh, yellow cab Nugget's got the gloves on don't let that fool you he, he won't be out there but uh, you wouldn't need to invite him more than once and he would be out there nugget Rees, who uh, <laughs> he's ready to go he's always ready to go nugget 
He's been the mascot for Australian cricket teams, uh, oh, way back. Barry Jarman, former vice captain of Australia, was the man who uh, first brought Nugget to the dressing room. And he's been uh, a regular attender ever since. Just the way Mark Waugh was uh, twisting the grip there, it looks as though the rubber grip may be perhaps a little loose. Nothing more annoying for a batsman than to have the, uh, the grip loose because when you actually try to play a drive, the, the handle screws around in your hands and doesn't make it easy to time the ball. Uh, young Vittori, he's fielding uh, at about 45 degrees behind square on the onside, so um, he's going to have to cover them. Anything that heads in his direction, there's no protection behind him. I'll tell you what, uh, the bowler there straight across the batsman, no wicket for seven. Lost over. O'Connor wasn't going to waste any time getting across and uh, just watch him here. Diva Nuto's uh, down the other end and he has really gone in. He's decided one way or the other he's going for that ball. Well, yesterday we saw Nathan Astle run out. He was the non striker. He allowed uh, the bowler, on that occasion Sean Pollock, to get a push in front of him. Can't believe batsmen are being so gentlemanly. A little more understandable in uh, Michael DiVenuto's case because he'd probably heard a call of no and knew that he wasn't going on with the run. It's probably at that point you hear he hears the no and certainly was stopping. But uh, if he'd been thinking about a run, I'm sure there would have been no way that uh, O'Connor would have got in front of him. Stretching to try and get it uh, and cut off down there by third man. So two. And some runs out of that cut shot. O'Connor's the man down in third man. An indication of how hard uh, Michael DiVenuto cuts at the ball. He got a bit of an underneath edge there. The ball bounced so high that Chris Harris, even at uh, quite deep point, couldn't get across and cut it off. for a run all the time Divanuto pushes and sort of always takes a stride before he makes up his mind can be a little bit of a worry for the batsman down the other end if uh, you don't get a call before your uh, partner starts to move Already we see uh, Chris Cairns, even though it's only his second over, he's varying his pace a lot, which is not a bad tactic when you, you know that the uh, opposing opening batsmen want to get going and they want to hit some boundaries. So you just try and put them off their rhythm a little bit. Don't uh, bowl at the same at a constant pace. Just two runs uh, off that over, and the score moves on to no wicket for nine. Five and a half mark, and that's outside off stump and caressed through the offside field. Lovely timing, beautiful cover drive. That was the one that just kept going. Mark Wall picked it and played a lovely shot. Mark Waugh realising that the left armour will be trying to get him to drive a bit. 
by angling the ball across. Really went out after that one. Reached out, made sure that he got it pretty well on the half volley and timed it to perfection. Almost uh, a repeat. And they're not quite so wide. That quarter-final victory that I was talking about uh, during the World Cup when Australia defeated New Zealand, having been set 289 to win, not only did Mark War make a century, but uh, the captain on that occasion, Mark Taylor, changed the batting order, pushed Mark Warren, uh, uh, Shane Warne up the uh, order and uh, used him as a pinch hitter, and Shane Warne really got the Australians going. Interesting to see if they use a similar sort of tactic. In fact, that uh, total, 4 for 289 from 47.5 to win that quarter-final is the highest total batting second for Australia to win. That match played in Chennai, or as it was known at the time, Madras. Oh, big appeal there for LBW. Must have been pretty close. Pretty good delivery there from Shane O'Connor. Full in length and just swinging back. Oh, now if there's no edge there, I'm not sure where it's going to miss. Looked plumb to me unless there was an inside edge. Yep. It's well played, that's four. Well, he's going to hit them hard. There's going to be a bit of diving in that area to try and stop these Di Venuto drives. And, uh, you really have to get hands on them, otherwise that short boundary is going to be peppered with boundaries. Well, it must be uh, very annoying to the bowler when he has a big appeal, thinks he's got a wicket, and then gets thrashed for four the next ball. Very sweetly timed by Michael Di Venuto. He likes that shot too, that one uh, given wide. Yes, uh, there must have been an inside edge here. This was just too straight to be given, no doubt. It straightens down the line. It's all over if there's not an inside edge, that's for sure. Well, um, <clears throat> Couldn't, uh, couldn't detect an edge, but uh, there was certainly a bit of bat in that one. Again, through the offside field, again, two more. 12 runs off that over, no wicket for 21. either not a single soul on the ground that one's uh, whipped away on the onside no rubbish on the field either it's a lot of pride uh, here in Adelaide when uh, it comes to talk about the Adelaide Oval it was interesting to note the the photograph in this morning's paper uh, of the first uh, day night international at the ground and it was just called our beloved oval and that's the way it's treated here and uh, I think anybody in the crowd oh, good shot it's racing away it's gone for four what's he doing down there well he'll get a rollicking from the captain that's for sure he just trotted over and gave it away Is that Macmillan down there? I can't believe um, that he gave that one away. Yes, he seemed to give it away very early. There was, looked to me, a definite opportunity to uh, save this ball, but he pulls up very early. Misjudged it. 
Over bold and uh, well, he's got it away through the slip court. Another four. No slips there, and when there no slips, if there's an edge, well, I suppose uh, it looks to me as if Fleming's got his hands on his hips now. I think perhaps uh, Cairns asked him to move him, get uh, the short uh, mid wicket in, and uh, and the gully. Well, they've had a little chat. Let's have another look at it. Would have needed a wide first slip to uh, hang on to it, but certainly an opportunity there. Yes. I don't think either man is happy, bowler or captain. Oh, well played. Mark War is looking good again. He looked really good in Sydney too before he got out. He played uh, magnificently and then all of a sudden played at that uh, off spinner which spun back at him. And, uh, see it now I'm just hanging his head I think he feels now that he's back in form he's judging by the way he's playing now he's looking at it as well Look at the strike rate Shane Warren, uh, as I mentioned in that uh, quarter-final in Madras he was promoted uh, up the order act as a pinch hitter he came in hit a couple of uh, boundaries I think one six and a boundary and really got things going for Australia could well be that uh, they might try a similar sort of tactic while the ball is hard it seems to be uh, easier to dispatch I've got that one away as well oh, what a good over this has turned out to be for Australia as well 15 it's no wicket for 36 New Zealand got away to uh, a very good start in their innings. It was uh, Nathan Astor who uh, hit the ball very hard, played particularly well early on. New Zealand uh, had the run rate up to seven after six overs. Australia now giving it a boost with Mark Orr getting a move on. He's uh, 23. He's uh, gone for a full shot there. There's a man back on the boundary, mind you. He was uh, looking to get underneath that one, probably uh, trying to get it over the top. He just went right back on the boundary. It's Nathan Astle and uh, Matthew Horn really got things going in those uh, early overs. and joking with umpire uh, Steve Davis last night in the game against South Africa at the end of the over. I didn't notice him laughing and joking with umpire Terry Crew at the end of his last over. So, talking with Steve Davis last night, uh, asking him about an appeal. And uh, it was quite big smiles. Over. I don't think he was all that thrilled when he had that last LBW turned down. Was the appeal against uh, Michael Tivanuto. Uh, 
different brands of glasses uh, worn by the players these days that uh, we haven't seen. Ian Harvey and Shane Warne who uh, dragged things back for Australia when New Zealand were on top. I would imagine uh, if Stephen Fleming, the New Zealand captain, thinks that things are getting a little bit out of hand, Kevin Larson will be one bowler that he will go to. Larson is noted for his accuracy in uh, one day internationals. Sure, what his other option would be? Maybe Chris Harris. Really, to both the earnings and 
crowd here at Adelaide. And uh, a lot of them will have paid their money to see the likes of the ball get going. Yes, I am, Karen. I'm about all my seven dollars along. So he's persevering with Christopher Cairns and Stephen Fleming. There's some very good banners around. Some not so good ones as well. Double call there against Chris Cairns. Just out of reach of the man at uh, short mid-wicket. Don't think he got a fingertip to it. The 
There's the uh, turn off his toes from uh, Mark War. Well, I think they fancy Mark War in this area, the New Zealanders, because just not the one day form of cricket, they put a man at short mid wicket. They have it in the test matches as well. Yeah, I think figure has as much of a chance in that position there as he is in the slip cordon. Vittori didn't get a bowl in uh, the first match the New Zealanders played. But, uh, he may well be in action out there in this game. A bit will depend on how Harris and Larson go because they were the bowling heroes for New Zealand in that victory. Yep, yep, yep. Lovely stroke for four. Not all that bad a ball, but absolutely middle by Mark Wall. None for 57. There's another bowling change. Chris Harris has given only the one over, but uh, I suspect Fleming intends to take off Cairns, who's had 33 taken from five overs, and swing Harris to uh, the city end. Astor. Let's see where the breeze is. Yeah, Astor will uh, have the breeze slightly with him. I would imagine with his bowling style that uh, Harris won't mind bowling into the breeze. No, and he bowled very well last night in these situations. He's, uh, he'll just bowl straight, and uh, there won't be too, anything too fancy about it. He'll vary his pace, and he'll just work on that very simple theory. If I bowl straight and you miss, then I may hit. Divanuto didn't get going at Sydney the other night and he likes to play square of the wicket on the offside. Sean Pollock was the bowler, put a pace in that delivery, hit it very well, but Shanti Rhodes did better. Divanuto might have had a uh, nerve end or two tingling the other evening in front of that big crowd, seeing them for the first time. More used to it now, and uh, he's looking quite a solid player. He's timed most of his strokes. That one didn't quite come off the middle. another call from uh, the keeper I talked about this during the test match saying that I'd prefer to hear the keepers say anything if they're going to keep chattering that's fine I prefer to Catch it. it's in the air out uh, through that offside that's a good save There's a good piece of chasing here. He may have copped a little bit of flack for not chasing one previously, but good commitment from McMillan. Didn't save any runs in the end because they ran four. Catch it, Flat! Oh, good heavens.
Well, that was almost as though it wasn't a catch. But I think it was. It was such a casual effort. Number 64. Could have been 31, but uh, it looked as though he didn't pick it up. Last ball of that previous over from Nathan Astle. Yep. Just a single there out to deep square. Divinito pushed it on the onside. Fleming just made a last minute grab. Or last fraction of a second grab. If it wasn't the captain who made the drop, he certainly would have been the captain looking at somebody, that's for sure. It's quite bizarre, really. You swallow these at practice, 100 out of 100. And uh, when he was re-practicing the catching act, it seemed to suggest that he should have tried with two hands. I think he was right. Well, it's a mystery. His arm wasn't even extended. It's still bent. shouldn't be giving him any width. That's when Michael Divinuto is at his best, where he can put one foot down the pitch and flay the bowling away past pointer through the covers. Well, he may have been lacking uh, confidence the other night. But he certainly isn't showing any signs of it. Didn't have the best of time in the field, Michael Divinuto, this afternoon. But he's put that behind him. It's a beautiful cover drive. It's too wide. And in the slot, it's a flat bat shot. Well, he certainly lost that in, uh, well, it can't really be in the lights because there's no lights behind where he is. It can only be that the sun has uh, got him in some way. Welcome back to Brisbane viewers. 191 to win for Australia. Current run rate is 5.91 and they are no wicket for 70. 38 for War and 28 for Divinuto. Can make that another four. And Divinuto has started to play his strokes now. He's gone on to 32, 38 for Mark War. He's starting to find the gaps and find the fence with regularity now. Divinuto, and it's a beautiful shot. Just the knee up, just picks it up off that leg stump line and. McMillan can't run that one down either. New Zealanders, and for the New Zealand captain, indeed, it was. Just a little short-arm jab off the hip there from DiVenuto. A very casual, one-handed, failed catching effort. Oh.
New Zealand got away to a fast start uh, when they batted. They won the toss and decided to take first strike. But uh, 12 overs gone now, and uh, the Australians have just caught up. Yes, good dirt back. No slip-ins, so that's quite a safe shot. Well, I think Mark War is looking ominous. He felt early on in the innings that he had to provide the impetus because Di Venuto was just getting settled. But now he's just gone back into the Mark War who looks so controlled. And uh, here he will know what the run rate required is. That is big. It's none for 81. Yes, good dirt back. behind a little but not now it's a beautiful shot pick up shot over mid wicket and some real action here and the crowd fence just about went completely west uh, Gavin Larson the miserly Gavin Larson what can he do about this run rate Larson did the job against South Africa with Chris Harris. One thing Fleming has to do is try to make sure he has someone to bowl towards the end. He can't use them up, I don't think anyway, as he did against South Africa. Because the Australians have uh, got away to such a good start. I doubt if he'll be able to use both of them on uh, opposite ends in the same phase of play. Now then, we're still inside the 15 overs. So there are only two men allowed outside the circle. One's a third man, the other a deep square. Divinuto is taking strike. Really picked up the pace, Steven Uto. It was a, a slowish start. He couldn't get any timing. In fact, he's probably trying to hit the ball too hard early in his innings. Now that's Mark Watt. It's a tradesman, tradesman's like sort of a shot from him. Just drifting into the pads and without any trouble at all, he just mokes it away. Sure, Max Kruger could do it at some stage, but uh, 
portion of runs he scores with that type of shot on the onside must be very high in any innings he plays. It's the first time he's straight on to uh, give a new verse pads. He certainly paid the penalty. A lovely shot. Well, the New Zealanders uh, haven't seen too much of Divinuto. Uh, fast learning the fact that he's strong all around the wicket and particularly strong on the pads. He's a good player of the pull shot and he doesn't mind lifting the ball over mid wicket as well. It's twice. Once the other side to break the fence, this time the fence stays intact. Let's take the single there. Run for 89. After this over, they'll be able to have five outside the circle, but at the moment it's still only two. Well, that's good captaincy in that respect because I think uh, he has to keep trying to create something here, Fleming. It's just going too nicely from an Australian point of view. He needs a wicket. He had an opportunity which he himself put down. But by changing the bowlers and changing the pace that the ball is coming onto the bat, they tend to create opportunities with the ball going in the air. This is what we mean about Harris taking the pace out of the ball while he's bowling it because Steven Uto has been playing the quicker delivery with ease. But he's through the shot there before the ball arrives. That's the problem. The other thing the New Zealanders are doing now is just slowing the pace of the whole game down as well. And Harris is just sort of dawdling back, and that sometimes isn't a bad ploy either, just to stop the momentum of the runs coming quickly. That's when they're in good touch, like facing, and uh, they're like facing often. That's good bowling. Can't get him, Divanito, at the moment. He can't quite get to Harris. Good, Harry. Good bowling. Over. No, we get for 89. Still, that was a mate. job sharing the load as well lift and right-handed combination 
working beautifully. Yeah, it's going you've got down. a full house, Rodney Marsh. That's just what one day internationals need. Oh, fantastic. What a great crowd. They're a happy crowd. The only thing they've done wrong is break the fence down. That's because there's so many of them here. Stephen Edo hit a ball out there uh, a couple of overs ago, and uh, it looked as though the whole fence was going to come down. It's jam-packed here. Fantastic. Yes, they can do some fielding. I think I think they wanted to get into the game. It's well struck out to uh, mid wicket. As uh, Devin Udo, he whipped it away and it's racing towards the boundary. And I think they all wanted to touch that white ball, maybe for the first time ever. There they go. And there goes the fence. All having a good time too. Nicely played, Mark Waugh, very strong of his pads, moves to 43, <coughs> none for 90, and it's been a long time since the Australians have been none for 89 off 15, chasing a fairly big total of 261 for victory. And at this stage, uh, they are the ones that hold the record off the first 15 overs so far. New Zealand weren't far behind, mind you, one for 84 earlier on today. That's a good start by the Australians, and obviously at this stage of the game, they are well placed to uh, reach this target of 261. Good jab. Yes, they've had the chances, New Zealand. Even though was dropped at short mid wicket by the captain Fleming. And regulation catch too at this level, but there they are now. It's level pegging. But the haven't lost a wicket, the Australians. And here's a catch again. This, this is really fruit for the sideboard. Very casual. Yes, good cap. Nice there's the call. Eight. Yeah, he's very lucky to be there. The captain's uh, got a pretty good pair of hands. But he just seems so casual about the whole thing. Whether or not he didn't pick it up, I don't know. But it was almost an afterthought to stick out the left ball. And it, uh, well, it just didn't look that hard to me. Nicely played the last delivery. But over there, just two runs conceded, none for 91. Situation now. The Australians will be feeling fairly comfortable at the moment. Count run rate is 5.68. Chris Harris. It's gone for him a big long hit down the ground. It's a high ball that may not carry the distance. One bounce over the rope. Even Udo at his best. Getting straight through the line. Intelligent batting from Michael Divanito. In between uh, overs there, Mark Wall and Divanato had a chat. And don't be at all surprised if what they discussed was the fact that well, one of us is going to have to go over the top and alter this field around. We only need five runs and over. A couple of fours here. They'll put the field back, which they have done now, and we can pick up our runs in ones. Harris was a screamer there, looking for the LBW. Steve Nitto got a bottom edge onto that one. Michael Divinetto, this is his method. Hit over the infield. Plays the horizontal bat shots on the off and on sides beautifully. And I think he's just running into some form now and growing in confidence. Excellent strike rate. 94.2. Seven boundaries. And the pressure squarely on the shoulders now of Fleming, the New Zealand captain, to get a wicket or two. 
I hope the Australians don't make the same mistake as the South Africans did last night by trying to play dinky little shots everywhere. If they're going to hit, hit straight. It's not that big a boundary here now with the ropes in. And if they hit the ball well, they'll get it for four or six, no worries, but provided they play straight. Yes, the ropes in, which is a great idea. Hit the Adelaide over. Gives the batsman the encouragement to try and hit a six straight before it was a long, long hit. But now you can hit straight, as we've seen today. Six is hit over the rope, as well as his short boundary square. Mark Ward chips it down to long on, just a single. There's the ropes. 80 metres. 90 metres down there. So the batsmen are clearing that with the big hits down the ground. Great idea to encourage fours and sixes in one-day internationals and the subcontinent big scores are made because of the short boundaries. And here the challenge is now for the batsmen to clear that rope. Well, bowl, good change of pace. You've got spinners all around the world agreeing with you, Bill. Bring the ropes in. <laughs> Still, Shane Warne got three wickets today. And uh, I think everyone likes to see the ball hit in the air in these one-day internationals. And a few sixes never go astray. Oh. I feel back to just working into the gaps. 50 for Michael DiVenuto just at the right time. It's none for 98. Nicely pushed him it off. Singer has a chance. Fleming throws, hits the stumps, but Mark War safely home. It's none for 99. Michael DiVenuto has played the hand of the selectors and his captain wants him to play here. Plenty of boundaries early on when the field is up. The first 15 overs on both sides of the wicket. He's hit beautifully through the offside and onsides. And it's been a brilliant knock from the team's point of view and from Michael DiVenuto's point of view as well. Wall goes, goes high, and he goes long. It won't carry, it may bounce slowly into the gutter. They're on fire, these grounds. Brings up the 100 without loss, and this full house at the Adelaide Oval getting great value for the dollar. A fantastic shot from Mark Wall. The thing that uh, the South Africans, as I said last night, didn't do was to go after the New Zealand bowlers by hitting down the ground. There's a big gap there, and uh, he's timed that to perfection. Didn't swing hard at it, kept his head down, and just eased it over mid-wicket for four. Oh. Cuts late. Moves to 49. Mark Wall's record is just about the best going around the Australian side at the moment. He's got a lot of hundreds. He averages 38. High strike rate. There he is now. Strike rating at 96, 49 off 51. He's got a willing partner at the other end tonight as well. Divanito on 51. Goes over the top again. Away she goes down the long line. Four more. Listen to that crowd. Oh, that's good batting. They're hot, the Australians, and uh, they're watching the ball, swinging through the line, and if it goes in the air, so what? It's clearing the fieldsmen and clearing them easily. Good true pitch, even bounce, ball coming onto the bat. And they're making these medium paces look a bit ordinary at the moment. Last night they looked like they were bowling hand grenades. Tonight they're getting blasted all over the park. Joy to watch. He goes nicely down to third man. Should get two. 
good throw. New Zealanders under enormous pressure. Well, there's a little bit of cramp there, maybe, for Michael DiVenuto. He's starting to play really well now. Watching the ball closely, and his timing's back. I thought it was just a little bit of stray early on, but now it appears to be right back. It's gone for it. If it's six, it could be out. The man's getting back. Will we get him? No, he does, and it crashes into the fence on the full. 16 off the over. He should have been back. It's McMillan. It was a half a chance. We'll come back later. It's none for 114. was on 57 he went for Larson he got hold of it Craig McMillan was the fieldsman and and this is half Lewis a chance gets a hand to it knocks it into the fence and the at the players gate Lewis still a bit slow, tentative wasn't it at the end there's the hand at the players gate four more to Divinito he moves to 61 He's having a share of luck, DiVenuto. Very close LBW. And uh, dropped twice. Both left-handed attempts. One certainly, uh, I think, the captain could have got both hands to. And that one, I think, Craig McMillan was just a little bit concerned as to where the fence was and didn't want to impale himself. Yes, nice, Harry. Chris Harris, slow, medium to Mark Wall on 49. buzz around the ground seeing a wonderful batting display sensible hitting over the infield glorious strokes off the pads by mark war still on 49 we'll see the tory i think come into the attack now on the other end i think it'll be a place to last and i think they have to try and get a wicket or two new zealand the defensive ploy of slow mediums Eric, hasn't boy. worked tonight oh nice harry now he's doing very well. Yes, I think he, he has worked. Uh, he's into his fourth over and they've only taken eight runs off him. But it was almost as though the two Australian batsmen targeted Larson and they thought, right, oh, you are about the right pace to go and we're going to take a bit of a chance against you and hit you down the ground and see if we can belt you out of the attack. They may well have done it. Leading edge brings up the 50. First foul straight, really, from Mark Wall. Fine up. Wonderful one day cricketer. Well, the cap capacity crowd really appreciating that 50 from Mark Wall. Just 55 balls, but it was he that got the innings going to start with. Michael DiVenuto. Couldn't find the gaps, couldn't find his timing. But Mark Wall, right from the very outset, has hit the ball in the middle of the bat. It's nicely played. They may look for two. It's a soft hit. Happy with the single. It's a wonderful partnership. 116 without loss. It's been the approach, the mental toughness of Dean Nito and Mark Wall. See the shots there, the beautiful drives through the offside, the one through mid wicket, a late cut. Six boundaries, 18 singles, four twos. Wonderful partnership. Joy to watch. Run about 6.15. Oh. At least one here. It's none for 117. Tory 
be spinning into the left-hander. So we'll see left-hander try and hit him with the spinner. Mark War probably try and hit him off the back foot through the offside if he pitches a fraction short. Larson none for 26. That was a blow for New Zealand and a victory to the two opening batsmen. They took him on and they won that little battle. And Cairns, six overs, none for 43 also was expensive. Mark War, since he's been opening in the one-day the Nationals, has been by far the Australian's best batsman. Very consistent, making a lot of hundreds. And that's about where he, that's about where he took it on the opening batting position. Look at that, the hundreds are there. Look at the strike rate of 78 in the top order. 300s in the World Cup. Average is 38 before this evening, and uh, that's a wonderful uh, record. Particularly when you have Brian Field on a handy off-spin bowler at this level as well. And early in his career is a handy medium pace bowler. I remember one night at the MCG, him wrapping up the West Indies, getting a few wickets here and there at the end. Terrific strike rate for a batsman of his class, a cricketer of his class. Ten one-day hundreds. That's the most ever. I think uh, Jeff Marsh had nine, if my memory is correct. Dean Jones, seven. So he heads the hundreds table. He's a joy to watch as well. I heard somebody before, I think it was Ian Smith saying, come a long way to see Mark War bat when he's in form. It's a beautiful timer of the ball. Well, ball, bit of turn. Ooh, bit of turn. That's hit a pebble. That's gone square. That really has turned. Well now, leg stump might be the line. It's that nice into the gap for single. I think that even it will take him on. Hit with a spin on the onside. Any self-respecting left-hander should. Nice hit with a spin here. Short square boundaries. And it's a matter of finding the gaps. Many have tried to take on the spinners here and not found the gaps. Found the man attempting to hit the ball over the fence for six. And it is a bit of a trap for young players. Trap for old players sometimes as well. And the Tory. Going for the first time in a one-day international against Australia. Fields well spread at 118 without loss. Just four men inside the circle. Good use of the feet. Brings a single. Four wickets only in six matches, but wickets really don't uh, matter that much often in one day cricket. Great cut, pretty ordinary economy, a rate 107. He's conceding a run of ball. So he needs wickets to uh, stop the flow of runs. He's always trying to bowl you out, this young lad. Nicely played, just the single. Tidy start, none for 120. for two here nice gentle hands coming back for the second excellent cricket well, one of the reasons uh, this partnership has been so good and so hard to stop from a New Zealand point of view is the fact that both Divinudo and Mark War score on both sides of the wicket to run a ball oh Interesting partnership because early on it was all Mark War when Divinito was struggling. 
since then he's raced past the great player. He's on 63 and Wars on 56. Partnership is very interesting. Early on, it was all Mark War. The yellow in the overs is Mark War. The white is Di Venuto. So it's down here. It's Di Venuto doing the scoring. So that's a nice balance there. Early on, you can see that it was Mark War at first spell there doing the damage. Yes, good work, Harry. But that's the batting chart we have now for both batsmen in a partnership. So, Di Venuto taking over around about the 10th over stage. Doing a wonderful job. Oh. Nice shot, beats the man at backward point, running down the hill. Roger Tooze the chase and another run for here. Happy with three, seven off the over, none for 127. And 11. It's well bowled and well played. Trying to get him to hit across the line there, but we're getting to the pitch of the ball. And this crowd is buzzing. Full house, wonderful batting display. Big total to chase. Nicely bowled and well played. Good use of the feet. Full pitch, doesn't put it away. Well fielded, short cover. Fleming, the captain at cover. Gave himself a little bit of room, opened up the face, couldn't beat the skipper. Yeah, good day. Looking for two, off they go, this will be close. Well run. Gee, didn't Mark Wall make up some ground in that second run? I really thought he was going to struggle there. I think he realised about five metres into the first run that there was a second there, and he coasted in at the end. That's very good running. Very ordinary throw from about uh, 50 metres. Fleming having a chat to the young spinner. He's doing okay. He's not dropping short. That's the main thing in that way. He's keeping the ball up. Four men on the onside. They're looking for two. Cairns, the fieldsman, knows the call. Yeah, I think Divinudo was coming then, and uh, Mark Ward turned him back. Cairns has got an extremely strong throwing arm. Oh. Cutting against the spin, the over bold. None for 132. In fact, it's 133. Just a little bit sloppy there. And the crowd roaring at the Adelaide Oval after 22 overs. Both of these 
two players have played. Mark War on 63 now. Divinuto under a bit of pressure when he started his innings because uh, he got out early in the first match. He's 66 of 64 balls. He's played some wonderful shots. That's the overall partnership total. He's hit that one pretty hard as well, and it's spinning away down to the boundary at square leg. Sixes yet, but uh, plenty of fours. Mark War is uh, certainly playing well. He's really played beautifully in Sydney. Played shots all over the ground, timed everything so well. Same here at Adelaide this evening. For a start, the Australians were behind the run rate a little bit, and that's largely because New Zealand got off to such a fantastic start. But you can see they've gone past the New Zealanders now, and they've got themselves a little bit of a hedge there. Oh. Nice, Harry. What are they going to do, Ian? <laughs> You're asking me, Tony. What they've got to do, the New Zealanders, is get uh, two wickets. I think uh, they need to get rid of both of these men and pretty quickly. I have to get a new partnership in there, two new players who have to get restarted. Down to square leg again. Quite a tidy over, just three runs from it. One, it's no wicket for 136. Around Australia, up now in Adelaide as that one is nudged away down to the mid-on boundary. It's just four st stacks of lights at the Adelaide Oval. Four pylons there with uh, the ground beautifully lit up. And uh, as we've said before, they all retract into little holes down the ground. Ah! One going down the leg side. This reminds me very much of a Mark War innings I saw in the World Cup last year in Chennai. He scored 110 and uh, went a long way towards beating New Zealand almost single-handed that night. And the reason it reminds me of it's not so much for the stroke play, but it's the control that he's got. And he seems to have the match in control. He knows exactly what the target is. He knows exactly how quickly he and his partner have to go to get home. He's doing it with ease. Flip! That's well fielded. Well, I think that uh, Mark War then thought that he got that one so nicely off the middle of the bat that it was going to go past the New Zealand captain. But you watch this for a stop. He hit it hard, and uh, he really did well. one doesn't want to lose sight of the role that a uh, partner who scores his runs fast makes to a player like Mark War. And even Nuto here has kept up with him and uh, even been ahead of him for a lot of the time. And that really does allow Mark War to play his normal game. Doesn't put the pressure on him to play silly shots. So he can just uh, continue like this until the match is won. There we go again. Beautiful drive by Divanudo. He's really turning it on. That's going to go to the fence for four, is it? It's very close. Well, he's uh, he's touching the ball and leaning up against the fence. I think he can do that here. It's uh, the rope where it's a problem. So uh, that's pretty well fielded. End of the over. No wicket for 143.
118 runs to win. The required run rate under five. Good, Harry. Straight to Madon again. So, really, what needs to happen here now? I think the New Zealanders just can't let these guys continue to pick up runs as easily as this. It's a it's a predicament for Fleming. If he brings the fieldsmen in, these two are good enough to chip it over the infield. If he pushes them back, they're good enough to get singles, and they only need five of those and over. Well played too. Well, all he can do really is just keep making bowling changes and hoping that uh, that one of them has a breakthrough quality in them. It's got still got Craig McMillan up his sleeve, who's bowled a little bit. He got a wicket in the Test match for him. Roger Twos, he's uh, not a bad little seam bowler. Would go back to Cairns. Oh. Off the pad. Desperate appeal from Harris. Yes, well, Terry Prue didn't give the other one. There's no way in the wide world he's going to give this one. Harris thinks it's uh, a good deal closer. I don't even think Terry Prue considered this for half a second. It's pitched in line, and it's straightened. It's down the wicket a wee way, and a little bit optimistic. A little bit. Have a look at that for confidence. Just a little flick of the wrist. Just watch the confidence which with, the, with which he flicks this one away. Watch this forward and then just a little roll of the wrists. So, that's a confident shot. Even Newton, more of the blaster. He's not going to slow down either. He's uh, on 73. Mark War on 69. Oh, he's given that one some room over the offside infield. It's running away down towards the boundary, and uh, I think that'll probably get there as well. Yes, eight runs off the over. There's nothing New Zealand can do here. No, we get for 151. Creeping into the ground here at the Adelaide Oval. Catch. Oh, and uh, he's blasted that one through the offside field. Catch. I don't know who he thought was going to catch it. That one's gone screaming to the fence for four. This is a magnificent cricket shot, this. It really is. It's a measured shot. All prize of catch it, as you said, but uh, absolutely no price. Always in control. The difference between the two players probably emphasised in the last two shots that each of them's played. The Venuto four off Harris, he really thrashed at the delivery, and he's what I'd call almost like a bully batsman. He just smashes the cricket ball and loves it. Real flourish. But uh, Mark War is a good deal more uh, gentle, I guess you'd have to say, in his stroke play. out yes he's uh, trying to do it once too often down the pitch he's gone and uh, I think he got caught up there a little bit that ball seemed to be lying around at the ground and Tarori had to pick it up whip the bales off that's how far Di Venuto was down the wicket well that's the end of a wonderful partnership Di Venuto was picked in this side to get Australia off to a fast start and he's uh, matched it with Mark War out there ending up with 77 of 74 balls and here it is watch it go down to the ground yeah, he's a bit stiff, big thick inside edge onto his back leg. And Adam Ferrari won't get too many easier stumpings than that, that's for sure. And uh, the crowd in the members' area rise and appreciate. Very good effort from Di Benuto. Australia lose their first wicket at 156.
middle stop. So Adam Gilchrist has been sent in at number three. He's also been picked to keep that uh, run rate up. Oh, stand. And uh, he can just now, I suppose, uh, just have a little look for an over or two. And uh, I don't think it'll be long before he starts to cut loose. He has the wicket again. Yeah. Bat onto back leg. Unlucky, really. And Perori won't get them any easier than that. Ow! Pitched outside the off stump. He does like to play that sweep shot too, Gilchrist. So I think that um, he doesn't really need to do anything absolutely silly here. As far as I'm concerned, he's a, a wonderful attacking player himself. All he's got to do is just knock it around a little bit while he gets himself, uh, oh, he gets his eye in. Nice. Five runs and a wicket. It's one for 50, 156. Well, we mentioned just a moment or two ago that uh, he has to keep creating Stephen Fleming, so he's trying again. This time with Craig McMillan. He's having a little bit of a golden run with the bat. Oh. Do with a bit of magic with the ball. New Zealand wicket keeper is quite a chatter. He really is. Uh, he doesn't mind having a little word, anything to upset the batsman. And uh, we just want you to listen after the next ball. We'll just uh, just listen very closely. In fact, we could probably do it now while uh, the umpires just listen to what uh, he says here as Gilchrist comes to the wicket. Center, Have a look at heels back in Melbourne, fellas. <laughs> well, there you are. You heard what he had to say. Come on then, let's get him out. We'll get heels back in Melbourne, fellas. So uh, plenty of little little bits of chirp going on from behind the stumps there, the Kiwi wee keeper. He's got two black eyes as well. <laughs> and I can tell you it's not for anything he said. Nice. Just in case you were wondering, he copped one in uh, fielding practice. Come on, boys, let's squeeze it up now. Having said that, the kiddies, fellas. wouldn't be surprised if one day... <laughs> He certainly uh, keeps talking to the players. He's uh, on his toes, and what's more, he's had a good tour so far. Yeah, good. In view of the fact that he's suggested that Healy may be playing in Melbourne, perhaps uh, we should uh, let you know exactly what it's going to be. Australia versus South Africa. That's the uh, Tuesday. That's Tuesday, the 9th of December. It's a day-night match. And that's being played at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. Oh, well bowled. That is a quicker one. One for 157. <laughs> towards the ocean oh there's another lovely drive back they come for the second good running right there, right there. 
Doesn't he look so relaxed to Mark Ward at the moment, taking his score up to 77 now. for that one as uh, Gilchrist actually had to run around the bowler. Well, that's well played. He's got that one away. It's running away down towards the long one boundary. He's a lovely timer of the ball. This won't quite get to the fence. Gilchrist off the mark with uh, a nicely stroked straight drive. Yes, well, there's two ways you can uh, shut the opposition up if you think they're getting at you. One, you can uh, get out and get back in the dressing room. Or well, two, you can get some runs. That was a very good cricket shot. Beautiful on drive. Just hitting with the spin and uh, not trying to hit it too hard. Beautiful timing. Runs are coming here so easily now. Almost every ball runs of sorts. This will give you an idea of how much the gap has opened up since the wicket's fallen. Just a little bit of a dip. That's to be expected. That one up a little more straight into the ring of fielders on the offside. It's one for 164. So is uh, Mark War on 79. Well, I have one chance left in this match, New Zealand, in all honesty, and that is to get rid of Mark War right now. So uh, whether it's another bowling change and perhaps Chris Cairns coming back into the attack, the strike bowler, maybe Shane O'Connor. He's got to be thinking that way now, Fleming. Because uh, if War bats through, they'll get there without any doubt. Australia, there's no problem there. What they have to do is get rid of him and get another player in. See if they can uh, just impose some pressure on a new partnership. So Gilchrist on strike now. The field just moves in a bit. Yeah, good man. It seems that Mark War has suggested to uh, the umpire there that uh, there's a bit of a problem with the ball. It's very dull. It's gone absolutely grey. You can see him talking to him there. He's got 88 off 87 balls. Sorry, 80 off 87 balls. So if he's got a problem with the ball, I hate to see him when he hasn't. <laughs> yes, I think the problem uh, is more to do with the new batsman. I think it probably would be quite tough when you first come out here because the ball, in fact, does disappear into the grey turf. You've got the black side screen behind, but as the ball drops, the background becomes the pitch. First of all, the grass, and then the pitch at the end, of course. It's very much the same colour as the ball. Good. Straight to mid wicket, just one run off uh, that particular over. One for 165.
decided to keep going with the same ball. And uh, it looks as if Fleming has taken the advice of Ian Smith and he's going to make another change and see if they can um, remove one of these two batsmen quickly, preferably Mark Wall, because you're right, if they get two new batsmen in there, just a little bit of uh, urgency, they've got to try and push it on a little bit and it may just be that they can create a little bit of a little bit of panic. Oh, outside off stump and cut away down to the fence for four. That's a great shot. Short outside off stump. Mark Ward now is seeing it despite the fact that it's gone grey. Smashed it away. This is a magnificent shot because he uses the bounce of the ball and deliberately hits up on it. A lot of coaches will tell youngsters you've got to roll your wrist with a cut shot. Not always. Don't always have to uh, keep it down. Sure, it's a good thing for young players to learn to cut down on the ball because it uh, takes away the opportunity of being caught. But if you're a great player like Mark War, you don't have to. You can use that bounce to your advantage. Again, just wide of the fieldsman, the placement that uh, he's got going here is superb. Now, if you are coaching the cut shot, here's the other version. When you deliberately hit over the top of it, roll a wrist on top of the ball and hit it into the ground. So it's a coaching lesson from Mark War. There's another one. Right off the meat of the bat that time, and he's got fielders rushing in in all directions, and that's well fielded. Vittori down there. But, uh, you can see how his placement was just perfect. He had to beat the infieldsman, which he did, and uh, that created a problem for those two on the fence. There's a slightly different version of the shot, this one, but not much variation in it. Still rolls the wrists. And there's uh, perhaps another example with uh, just using the pace of the ball. The line's a little straighter there. But very clever batting, I have to say that. And you just use the pace of the ball and the bounce again, but uh, because the line's straighter, I can't play the flat bat shot, so I play it more with an upright bat. Just work it behind point. Yes, but I think when he's playing like this, you're going to need another six or seven Kiwis out there to try and <laughs> pluck up those gaps because he does penetrate them very well. No! So another good uh, over this one for Australia. Nine from it. One for 174. I think he's decided that Larson he's going to work it away on the onside. Yeah, well, that's one of the other reasons I think it's been a great knock, this one, because first of all, he took the pressure off Divanuto, the new boy, by upping the ante in his, the early part of the innings. Now Gilchrist's come in, and to allow him to get settled, he's doing the same thing. He's uh, certainly got them running around in all directions. He's uh, playing shots all around the wicket. To give you some idea of um, what? just give you some idea of how many uh, runs he scored on both sides of the wicket. Have a look at all of these in this area here, and then exactly the same on the other side. Just pushing for ones and twos all into the little gaps and then uh, plenty of fours on, in all directions as well two lovely cover drives here We've got a couple of cuts back with a square this is almost dead square so certainly peppered the offside field
Yes, I've got to say that I think the, uh, the selectors have got this uh, little formula right. If you've got Mark Waugh batting at number one, he can play normally. If he plays like this, then you've got Diva Nuto and players like Gilchrist taking the pressure off Mark Waugh. He can just play his normal game. And Australians are going to end up with some big scores. Even if it goes wrong from time to time, there's plenty of uh, batting to come. Seven off the over, one for 181. bear on the top of the Christmas tree there and would have been perfect. The lights haven't really taken effect at Adelaide Oval yet, but the sun is sinking and it is just a glorious evening. Not far away from getting really dark. What a beautiful setting. Best cricket ground in the world. We haven't seen too many get past Mark Waugh's bat tonight. And uh, that one was just on the right line. And snuck it past. Trying to run that down to uh, third man for a single. Just five runs away from yet another hundred. One day hundred for Australia. Australia needing 261 for victory. In the 32nd over, they have still got 18 overs to score 79 runs. Shouldn't be a problem, but who knows? Neatly played away. Very fast between the wickets, Gilchrist, as well. Stephen Fleming, the uh, New Zealand captain, will be working hard on uh, how many overs he has left and what sort of combinations he can use. He'd be less impressed uh, with that sunset. Looks beautiful to those who are not taking the welting. One for one eight three. Oh, Harry. Yeah, Chris Harris seven overs for twenty eight, and in the context of uh, the current run rate. Australia scoring at nearly six runs per over. He's only been going for four and over. And I think uh, one of the main reasons he's been hardest to hit is because he's so slow. He is a slow medium pacer. Oh, good there. There are a lot of marks on that ball. That uh, will be looking several different colours as it comes down the pitch towards the batsman. One side of it's a bit dark, and there are some light patches on it. As it goes down, catch it, Flemo. Now there's an exhortation and a half, if ever I've heard it. And would have been one of the great catches, if not the greatest.
going there. I don't suppose one wicket keeper can take exception to what another wicket keeper says, Rodney. Again by uh, Chris Harris, one for one eight three. The winner of today's Toyota Channel Nine banner competition is Phil Burgess from Kidman Park. His banner is located uh, on the southern. And there's got to be some better method, because it is dreadfully, dreadfully hard. Don't hold your breath, Rodney. I won't hold my breath, but I think the more we complain about it, perhaps the more chance we've got of someone else complaining about it. Maybe I'm just getting old. Assume nothing. 78 needed to win. Daniel Vittoria, the bowler. Mark Wall goes to 97. straight up in the air and then out to mid-off. Well, Adam Gilchrist on just five and he's really struggling to hit the ball off the square out there. Just the single. Now Mark War on 97 will have strike. Six runs off just 20, well, just six runs off 26 balls for Adam Gilchrist, and that's most unlike him. The situation isn't desperate, of course. It's been a wonderful knock from Mark War. Timing and the footwork seems light years away that people were talking about him uh, being a chance of being left out of. An Australian side. He was struggling a bit. But uh, he started to bat well towards the end of the Test Series. This is a wonderful, fluent innings. One for 186. Beautiful ground, nice traditional grandstands and modern lights. Ninety-eight for Mark War. Good, Harry. 
one moment there. He might just have been thinking about going back for the second, but I think wise of caution prevailed. Well, I think uh, if you have a quick look at the scoreboard, it would have been absolutely fatal. Interesting to see if uh, Stephen Fleming puts any pressure on uh, Mark Wall here. It doesn't appear as though the field's changed. There it is, 100 for Mark Wall and a standing ovation. It's been quite a brilliant innings. seven balls only for Mark War and that is a fine fine innings his 11th one day hundred fourth in Australia third against New Zealand and uh, a little bit reminiscent of that one in the World Cup in 95 96 at Chennai Stadium in Madras when uh, Australia was chasing around about 290 and it was he who almost single-handedly got them over the line. Good. That's very good running. Gilchrist has got back there almost where none existed as regards the second run, and Mark Waugh appreciated it. It's a big one. It's a big one. Well into the crowd. And that's the first time he's really dropped short. And that has disappeared into the bleachers. Good hit from Gilchrist. Gave that plenty. Although, perhaps he didn't. It was just perfect timing. It wasn't a tremendously big hit but it did go back many many rows into the crowd one for 199 as Harris's 10th and final over. Now that's six of Gilchrist. Distance it went back in the crowd, I think it was a tremendous whack. Well, he did give it a bit, but it was so beautifully timed. Magnificently struck.
three on the fence on the leg side for Mark War now. Like uh, Chris Harris might have been in different bounce, but uh, might also have been that he wasn't going down as quickly as uh, he sometimes does. sudden Adam Gilchrist is starting to find the gaps he hasn't been in really good nick tonight his timing has been uh, astray his placement has been astray 34 balls for 16 runs but that six may just have helped him well they've gone for catches stumping skip whatever you like he's given out at the top end the cathedral end Caught behind. Perore has also gone for the stumping. <laughs> and Mark Wall goes a delightful innings. Exactly what the Australians needed, chasing 261. Yeah, caught behind and <laughs> they have a leg going up everywhere. However, it doesn't matter because he's been given out by umpire Terry Prue. Well, it was an unusual one. There appeared to be two noises. But what a great innings from Mark War, 104 and 113 balls. And I think there was an edge there. I think it may well have been a double play. Certainly out court, but the important things from Australia's point of view is. Greg Blewett is the new batsman. Comes out to join uh, Adam Gilchrist, who's on 16. Mark War out for a brilliant 104. Uh, Chris Harris. Yes, good, Harrow. Oh, now, the dismissal of Mark War, it looked like an edge, and then Perore thought the umpire wasn't going to give him out at the bowler's end, so he did him for a stumping as well. That's the edge, quite a big hit. Now he looks at the umpire, gets nothing. And, well, he's got it either way, but uh, the umpire at the bowler's end then gave him out, caught behind. Oh, waiting, waiting, yes, waiting. Mecca. It's over. End of the over, two for 202. Greg so Blue at the band coming in at number four. I suppose this used to happen when Bradman played that the incoming batsman uh, in Adelaide, his local boy, would get a standing ovation on his way in rather than on his way out, but it certainly happened for Blewett here tonight. Maybe they were still standing from applauding Mark Wall. Now then, they've taken the wicket they wanted. Larson is back into the attack. Tactics now must be to try to tie down these two. They're both good stroke players. They're really, they've uh, 
got as their best chance to take a couple more wickets. 59 runs in 78 balls, that's relatively simple. Good gap. Well, they've got the field in now. They only have to have uh, four men inside the circle. And in fact, they've got four men inside the circle on the offside to Adam Gilchrist. Two on the onside, which is six men inside the circle, only three out. They're allowed five out. A good tactic from New Zealand captain. Greg Blewett has just come to the crease, and I imagine Stephen Fleming will try and keep him on strike. That is normally the tactic the captain employs. The new man uh, won't be adjusted to the light as well. The pace of the pitch. And yet another man comes in from the fence. So it's four on the offside for Blewett as well. Well, bold. Larson pinned down the South African batsman last night. So this is what he'll be trying to do here. He's got those four men Rodney Marsh mentioned on the offside. The scoring rate is just sliding back a fraction towards the Australians. The Australians in the gold. Those um, gold lines there belonging to New Zealand. Not far away, I'd suggest. Maybe just sliding down leg side. Good shout from Larson. I think I saw one a little closer than that earlier on this evening. for 204. got through his 10 overs now it's Nathan Aston so it's Aston and Larson to do the medium pace bowling and then there's Vittori who's uh, got one for 41 from seven overs good dirty lots and lots of moths flying around the ground as uh, often happens in cricket matches are played under lights I thought Australia had a really good chance uh, of uh, getting their run rate up here tonight. But uh, they've gone into their shell a bit. Two new men at the crease, although Gilchrist has been there for quite a long time. accurate they'll, they'll be able to break out of it at some stage or they should but uh, this is the only tactic New Zealand can use and uh, they're doing it well at the moment Good. 
As Moths, I was talking about, uh, don't bother the players. They're up high enough that generally it's not going to be a problem. Two for 204. Larson the bowler. And that is a beautiful stroke. Absolutely beautiful. It wasn't short. And Gilchrist has rocked onto his back foot and thrashed it away through midwicket. Here's Ian Chappell. Thanks, Richie. Anything that is slightly short gets the treatment from Adam Gilchrist. He's already put one into the member stand. On that occasion, he decided to hit down, but beautifully through the gap. Just what uh, what the Australians needed, with Greg Blewett just having arrived at the crease, and Stephen Fleming putting some pressure on him by bringing a lot of fielders inside the circle. It's up to Adam Gilchrist, who's been there for a while, to uh, get things moving and help his partner out, much as Mark Waugh did when uh, Gilchrist first came to the crease. Yeah! He's gone yes! right through him as uh, Greg Blewett tried to force him over long on, get the fieldsman back, and Greg Blewett has gone for a duck. Yes, uh, comprehensively bowled as well. I think it's quite tough actually picking the ball out there uh, when you first come into bat. Just watch this uh, delivery. Back goes the middle stump. Yes, that's good bowling. Just a little bit quicker, that one. Blew it, missing it. So uh, that's the end of him. Unfortunately, in front of this big home crowd, out for a duck. So disappointment there for And uh, the score now, three for 209. Well, Steve Waugh, the captain, giving the young blokes an opportunity. Sent Adam Gilchrist in at number three. Ian Harvey now comes in with three wickets down. And he replaces Greg Blewett. Greg Blewett, bold for a duck. Yes, he looks to be trying to get a little bit of off-cut on this one, and uh, it's hit the middle stump. Not a, not a nice sight for Greg Blewett. Just watch him here, trying to play an aggressive drive at that one, and uh, back goes the middle stump. So that silenced the uh, huge crowd here for a few minutes. Over 30,000 people at the Adelaide Oval, stunned as uh, Blewett had his middle stump knocked back. The Australians well and truly in control. This has been a while since uh, a crowd this size is uh, packed into this ground. In fact, it goes back 12 years. To the season of uh, 1985. Tonight, the attendance just over 30,000. Just going down leg side. Harvey going back for the second. That's very well run. 
Australia, three for 213. And a yes, no there. And Harvey quickly sending Gilchrist back. Yes, well, if you're going to do it, uh, that's when you've got to do it very quickly. So just 48 to win off 59 balls. Well, it's beautifully struck. This is what uh, Adam Gilchrist has been selected for, his ability to hit the ball over the top and particularly to hit sixes. Yes, he's a lovely crisp hitter of the cricket ball. Now that uh, he's got himself settled, he's started to time the ball well. And, uh, that's a nice straight hit, uh, straight over the top of mid-off's head. Australia uh, have been in front for a long time, although the New Zealanders have just dragged them back with those uh, couple of wickets. Chris, two fours and one six in his score of 28. He really does have uh, tremendous timing and the ability to clear the infield easily. He's a very good natural hitter. Oh, good. Good, dirty. So he seems to be able to slip that uh, slightly quicker ball in. You can see. Uh, Harvey just squinting a little bit there as if he's finding it a little bit difficult to pick this uh, ball that's gone a little bit brown up in the in the pitch as it drops. Uh, nice yes, it's got to be disconcerting because the batsman relies heavily on uh, picking the ball up out of the bowler's hand. Once you do that, then you generally get a good look all the way. But if it suddenly gets into the pitch and it's almost the same colour, Makes life difficult for the batsman. A chance at a terrible fielding performance, and uh, it could cost them a couple of extra runs. In the end, one. It's three for 220. spoken about this ball for years uh, I don't want to harp on it but uh, really one of the great things about the white ball is uh, how clear it is at night and uh, when it loses color like this it, uh, it really does lose its appeal time really has come for someone to to get moving and do something about this otherwise we'll just drift on forever with uh, a really gray ball at the end of a cricket match Yes, I remember the very early uh, promos for night cricket were come and see the white ball fly and everybody talked about how great it was to see the, the ball flying through the outfield. Whereas uh, with the red ball, they reckoned they had trouble picking it up. But uh, unfortunately, now it's got to be a struggle for the people in the crowd to actually see the brown ball fly. That's about the colour it is. Chris Harris and he's hit them. I think that's got to be out. Direct hit, Chris Harris, the best fielder in the New Zealand side. And once again, he's lifted his team. Yes, if you hit the stumps direct, uh, the chances are that you uh, in with a good chance of uh, getting the run out effected. He's called for the replay, and uh, I think you'll find that he's at least a foot out of his ground here. Pushes it away on the offside, in he comes, and that, th that throw really was quick. It hit the stumps, and uh, he was, well, he was a foot short, wasn't he? Umpire Prue there uh, pausing for, on it for a while and then asking for the replay. One interesting facet, you from that other angle, you couldn't see actually when the bales came off because the keeper was in the way, but there you get a very clear view. And Adam Gilchrist, who already had the gloves off, he can keep walking. That's an excellent piece of work from uh, Chris Harris. 
I mean, Harvey uh, murdered his partner with that call, but then I guess his partner can always say no. Yes, the reverse happened a little while, and uh, Harvey did say no to a Gilchrist call, but uh, that's out for sure. He's um, by at least a foot. So Adam Gilchrist out for 29, and it's now four for 221. Adam Gilchrist out for 29 from 44 ball space. Next man in Australia is the captain of Australia, Steve Wall. Steve Waugh, the captain, uh, has arrived at the crease. It was quiet when he actually walked onto the ground. Yes, I think the crowd were actually yeah. waiting for the announcement of who the batsman was. Steve Waugh sort of walked out with his uh, hand cupped to his ear as if to say, well, where's the reception? That's what the task is ahead of him. 40 from 50. Actually, I think what happened was that uh, one of the players out there actually said something to him and uh, he put his hand up to say, uh, what is that? Um, just as he walked past the number six out there at cover. Oh, good. Ken's, uh, Ken's actually said something to him as he walked out. Just watch him walking out here. That's Ken's uh, probably giving him a little welcome of some sort. Good over from Gavin Larson. It's four for 221. So suddenly the New Zealanders are alive. Yes, uh, they've probably gone quiet because uh, they're just getting a little worried. And uh, that's not going to help the uh, case at all because uh, things are getting a little tight now. Let's have another look at it. See him upright and, uh, well, I don't know that it did too much. He was trying to play it way square and it was a big nick. And uh, that was the end of Harvey. So that's a big blow. Harvey out for three. It's five for 221. Michael Bevan, not used to coming in uh, this low down, fall of the fifth wicket, but uh, a fair amount of one day experience out there at the moment, with Bevan coming out to join the skipper, following the demise of Ian Harvey. Yes, well they're not giving up uh, the Kiwis, are they? Are they? This one uh, just hitting the outside edge there, he was trying to play it away square, and uh, that was a huge nick. And, uh, have a look at the face of Perori there, he's uh, as happy as a bee. And uh, he always tries to make sure, just in case, by taking the bales off, doesn't he? Yep, off they came again, just in case. <laughs> yes, you just never know when a batsman might wander out of his crease. Mark Ward was actually wandering back to the pavilion, I think, until he suddenly thought the umpire may not give him out. Bevan on strike to Astor. Nice, dirty. 
Well, Stephen Fleming, once again, he's doing the right thing. He's got four inside the circle on the offside, two on the onside. Saying to the incoming batsman, well, go on, hit over the top if you're game. Good, do back. Come on, Shane. That's one thing that Michael Bevan doesn't seem to bother with hitting over the top. He's, uh, his uh, great ability has been to hit the ball into the gaps virtually as soon as he arrives at the crease. And then he can run like a deer. Bevan off the mark. Yes, that's definitely his shot. They've got to try and block that uh, area at mid-wicket off a little bit. As you can see there's uh, a little bit of panic creeping into the camp. A lot of little white dots there bringing that blue line back to the fold. This could be a pretty interesting game. Another wicket or two now. So 39 runs to win, 44 balls remaining. That little gap's closing up a little bit as well. Third man will cut it off. That's uh, Roger Twos. You sound like you're discovering that uh, long lost New Zealand uncle, Greggy. No, no, no. I just, uh, I just, you know, lovely big crowd here. Nice close match would be lovely. Last ball finish would be good. Another good over for New Zealand. It's five for two twenty-five. And you can afford to send uh, Michael Bevan in at number seven. Um, really uh, experienced at uh, this sort of situation. These two, Bevan is the sort of player that loves to just push those ones and uh, has a very good, uh, very good idea of how to pace these one-day games. That's why he's been so good over the years. Once again, complaints about the ball. The players uh, have already had the ball changed once. Oh, that's good there, Gab. The longest losing sequence in One Day Internationals for Australia was when they lost the Singer Cup final. That would have been uh, in Sri Lanka. And then all five matches in the Titan Cup in India. And uh, they've lost five on the trot here. Over long on. That's nicely hit. Yes, uh, that certainly relieves the pressure a bit. He's come out, uh, hasn't been there for long. He's confronted with a... A ball the same colour as the pitch. And uh, this is a lovely shot in the circumstances. And he just hits it straight down, heaves it straight over the top of Midon's head. And so uh, he's now succeeded in pushing him back, which is exactly what Bevan wants, because uh, he'll pick up ones in that area now at random. Oh, good, Gabby boy. Just four start. men inside the circle now for Michael Bevan. Three of them on the offside. And then a mid wicket. Bevan will retain the strike as five for 231.
required for Australia. Nice, lovely placement. That's his great strength. It's amazing what you can do to the thing when you can see it. A lovely shot from Bevan. Well, he does uh, rise to the occasion, doesn't he? He's done that on a few times, uh, on a few occasions in his uh, career. That one just drifting away, and he's hit it beautifully into the gap. Yes, that ball just swung a little bit as well, which meant that uh, he had a bit of width. That's very well run. He's fast, isn't he? He's the fastest, in fact. Just watch him go. Touches down, watching the ball all the time. And those of you watching, those youngsters watching, that's the way to touch and turn. There would be two here as well. No, they decide against it. And that's a good throw. Chris Cairns, respect for the arm. Just watch that um, that little turn of Bevan's uh, when he went back for the second. Uh, a few youngster watching this. Just watch how he watches the ball as he touches down, touches down, and then comes. Things just slipping away now for Stephen Fleming. And it's been Michael Bevan's ability to hit a couple of boundaries that released the pressure and forced Stephen Fleming to push the field back a little, or push the odd fieldsman back, which opened up a few gaps. It's opened up that gap as well, 21 to get off 31. Five for 241. Here from Mark War. And Michael DiVenuto, they started it off with a magnificent partnership. 156, 77 off, 74 balls for DiVenuto and Mark Waugh, 104 off 113. A little bit of a quiver in the middle there, blew it, Dark Harvey 3. Evan Larson doing a good job once again, Larson. Nice and straight. Steve Ward just picks him up for one. They're looking for two. Not coming back. Of course, on Tuesday, we go to the MCG. And it looks like it's going to be one game all. And that's Australia versus South Africa. I suggest if you're a Melbourne fan watching this telecast, bring a number early tomorrow and get a ticket. It should be a great contest. Carlton United Series hotting up. All the teams look in fairly good form, Ian Smith. Yes, I do, Bill. And this will do the Australians uh, no end of good, this batting performance. Because uh, at the tea break, they must have thought, well, they're going to have to do it very well indeed to get home. And they have. Mark War superb once again. Oh, that could have been a catch. Not sure about that. Have a look at that. I'm trying to work it past the wicket keeper. No doubt about it. There's a nick here. Outside edge. 
And down she went. He's done a good job for Rory. He's been quite vocal, but he's backed it up with some handy work until then. Just stayed down a bit, didn't it? Another look at that. It didn't really carry it. Just died a bit off the bat. It was a genuine nick. This time he plays a lot straighter. Michael Bevan, that's a wicket that New Zealand needed. If they're going to have any chance, I feel, in this match. He was coming up. Bevan on 14, Steve Waugh on 7. 19 to win. Well bowled. Tory at mid on. They go over the top here. Well, if not over the top, he'll hit one through the gap. Bevan is a great place for the ball. That's why he averages 55. Now the man's dropping back. Fleming's aware that he might be looking for the hit down the ground. He's dropping Tory back. So he's prepared to concede one down to long on, but not four. Gets a gap, mid-wicket, what fine placement. Three runs off the over, a good one from New Zealand point of view. They needed a wicket, five for Tory, last throw of the dice for New Zealand, Ian Smith. Yes, it is. I thought that he might have bowled Tory when Steve Waugh first came to the wicket because uh, Steve was not a great starter against spin. I think that might have been the time, but I think Stephen Fleming's done a, a pretty good job with his captaincy. He's tried everything he possibly could. He's tried to create opportunities to take wickets. Saw all those bowlers he's used. It's only made one mistake when he dropped that catch in the wicket, I guess. And the captain needs to leave from the front. He was either having a snooze or didn't pick it up because it was a gentle push from Steven Uto and went straight to his left hand and he put him down. But Mark War has been magnificent. 11 one day international hundreds for Mark War now and none better than tonight. It was a chanceless innings, scoring a runner ball and he played all the shots. It was just a joy to watch. Tory coming over the wicket to Steve War. Good well bowled. Nice yes, it was well bowled. Well, right at the start of the day, Ian Chappell was talking to Stephen War at the toss, and uh, he said maybe it's time for the old hands to lead from the front. He had a big performance from some experienced players. And Steve War said, I think uh, they're all good enough at this level, whether they're an old hand or a new hand. Attempt to sweep, he gets it past the wicket keeper. Just the single, we'll wait for the call, possibly a leg by. A leg by. And he got uh, that performance from both Stephen Watt, his brother Mark, absolutely superb. But it was the partnership with Di Venuto that broke uh, the Kiwis' backs and their heart in the process, I think. They were looking for early chances, early breakthroughs. They had a reasonably good LBW shout turned down. Fleming put down a catch. And with that, uh, they fed off those crumbsy Australians, and it really was a top performance, that partnership. He has 156 of 154 balls, takes the pressure off the team if you lose a wicket or two which Australians have done but they're so well placed and of course got the experience of Bevan warns still to come as well very experienced one day cricketers Bevan in particular rated by many as the number one one day batsman in the world averaging 55 with the bat yep, come to you, works in the come to is a call Stephen is going to come back excellent running because it's a corner down there not the quickest move at the fast bowl, and he's quite deep. Know your outfielders and know your cricket grounds. Bit of both of that in this call because uh, play a lot of cricket at this ground, Bevan and War, and they know the areas where you can look for two. It's difficult when it's square of the wicket, but if they hit more down the ground, Stephen War's running to the danger end there, did it with ease. 
Oh, That's well bowled. Down. Almost beat him in fight. Then he was trying nice to work Harry it Boyd. on the onside with the spin. As well bowled. He's got to keep it up. He's got to keep it a little bit more towards off stump. So he's trying to hit on the onside with the spin, Bevan. He likes to do that. In driving through the offside if possible. He goes again, straight down the onside. Just the one this time. Maybe he should try around the wicket here. He's, he's coming over. He's not frightened to throw it up. And Daniel Vittori, he's uh, always challenging the batsman to take him on. Attempted sweep shot. No bat. Over. Four off the over. Five for two for eight. Done it in style, really. He's got plenty of batting left with Bevan and Steve Waugh at the wicket. There he goes again down the ground. This time, just a single. Michael Bevan. Getting close to 2001 day runs, uh, Michael Bevan. And he does enjoy it. You get the feeling he knows he's in control. That's a wonderful record. 75 the strike rate, 55 the average, 61 matches, only 200s because he bats down the order and 1150s. Steve oh, Hoy's got him. I think he's knocked him over. Yes, he has. He's given caught behind, I think. Well, LBW was off the pad. Stephen were walking the drive. There was a couple of noises. We'll have a good look at this. Well, second time in a row, Stephen War walks off the pack. Disgruntled. He was very unhappy at the SCG the other night. Once again, he's shaking the head. Now, this did not bounce, so it wasn't going over. Strikes him in line with about middle and off, and that's carrying on to hit the stump, so I don't think there's any doubt about that. Big shout, and Daryl here agrees. That's close enough for me, says he. Steve Waugh goes for seven, it's six for 2.49. Yeah, it's definitely LBW. There was no catch. At first, I thought it went through the keeper. There was a noise warned coming out. It was one of those decisions there where um, the batsman was playing a fraction forward, a bit of movement in, but it was certainly it was straight. He bowled stump to stump. And the Australian skipper back in the dressing room, the crowd getting a bit noisy again as Warren comes out. It's every duck ball so important here in wickets. Well, with the New Zealanders, here it is again. What's your decision at home? Close to the umpire. Pitches. Well, I think that's out. Hits him in line. The only doubt it would have gone on and missed leg stump. But I think it was probably pretty close to taking mid on leg. So he's gone. For seven. Shane Warne. In good touch, but it's not easy. The field now up. One, two, three, four, five inside the circle. Yes, good. That's the over bowl, is it? No, it's not. Three to go. We're getting excited. We can't count now. <laughs> oh, I can count, Bill. You just settled down there. I was just going to say, at one for 201, it was uh, about 45, 50 minutes ago. I'm pretty sure Shane Warne had the gear packed away. I certainly would have thought that batting was the last thing on his mind. Another on the edge of their seats. Probably thinking, get Michael Bevan on strike. Bevan Larson. Warren chips it away. Oh, run out, surely. Oh, the ball wasn't there. A bit of a mix up. Larson couldn't get back to the stumps. That was very, very close. Two specific fieldsmen. He had a real chance if somebody had got to the stumps. Yeah, I think Gavin Larson could have got back to the stumps because he hasn't got a big follow through. Look, he just stands there and uh, doesn't really make a great effort. Or someone could have, maybe McMillan could have come in. But certainly someone had to at least try and get to the stumps. Can't rely on the direct hits. They're a bonus. Especially in that situation, the mid-on and uh, cover should have been in. Yes, Bevan gets it through. One's the call. They look for two. The Tories are a bit slow. Happy with yes, the single. Work, oh, that's a let-off that the Australians needed. Warren should have been gone there. 
Was it well fielded by Toos as well? He did the job. The bowler was having a bit of a snooze, and so was the man at cover. Made no effort to get to the stumps. Well, it's all happening. 10 off 13. I think if you can get the wickets now, it's the balls and the runs. They want some dot balls, New Zealand. Warren will probably try and go over the top. It's a fine, maybe two, it's O'Connor. Four and a wicket off that over. Six for two, five, two. Over cover. That's the way Warren will go. Probably trying to hit with a spin. Doesn't it goes down the leg side? Well run by Bevan. Well, New Zealand have got a sniff, but they have to either get Michael Bevan out or get him off strike. They might have just to concede one run here and keep bowling at the guy at the other end, whoever he might be. If Bevan gets most of the strike, Australia will win, no doubt about that. It's brilliant in these situations. That equation won't be phasing him. If he gets the strike. Well, Bowler gets through, does it? No. Keeper knocks it through, he knocks it away. Well, he's done here, Michael Bevan, and all he can do really is concede an, a dot ball. He didn't even play a shot, which is very rare in this situation, because he was beaten in the air. Took that well into the gap, and O'Connor. Just a single war on strike. Great work, Shano! He's got to throw it up to Shane Warren. So you can see his heart stumping there. He'll have a go. That's his method. There's three men out on the onside. Backward square leg, a mid wicket, and a long on. Seven off nine. There's the long on, the mid wicket, and the backward square leg. Oh. Swings and he misses. Hey. Cry. Umpire Proust says not out. Well, turning for the LBW here. Now, where did this strike? Where did it pitch, first of all? That pitch in line with the stumps or outside leg stump. And it's pitched in the line with middle and gone on to hit the back leg. Hmm. You see the off stump. Not a bad uh, appeal, shall we say that anyway, Bill. There's another dot ball, though. Warren wound up. You try and clear the square leg fence. That's the way he's going. It's Shane Warren's method. He's got to just put the bat on ball, really. Oh, he can't do it. He goes for the fancy one. It's another dot ball. Well, the hearts are thumping. Well bowled by the young spinner. It's never easy. Seven off seven. They need a boundary. But look at that. One dot, one dot, one. Three off the over, six for 255, but Warren's got the strike, Ann Smith. That's a brilliant over, I've got to say that, first of all, before we look at what's left to come. That was a magnificent over from a young man in that situation, it really was. Take my hat off to him. Could easily have been dispatched over the fence and we'd be all going home, but uh, he's kept it going, the match. Which way will Warren go? Where will Larson bowl it? He's gone. Out to cover. Got a single. Now Bevan is the four man. What will Bevan do? He doesn't want to lose the strike, does he? Well, that's, I think, what Shane Ward had to do. Unless he was going to hit it over the fence and we all walk off, he had to give it back to Bevan. That's what he's in the side for to handle these situations. Warren gets the wickets, Bevan gets the runs. Five from five. The Zealanders have done well, haven't they? One for 202, the Australians. Now they need. Few runs to win it in the final over. And we all think we're going home early. Bevan is cool as a cucumber. Looking at it, where's my space? Having a look for a gap. Larson's good at this. Can't be too short. 
can't get around about middle and leg, or he'll rip him away. He's hit over the way, there's the gap. That's the way he does it. Won't go for four, they'll get three, I think. The skipper's a fieldsman. They get three. The players running everywhere, that was beautifully played. That is a very clever cricket shot. That's thinking at its best. It's a tough shot to play. But he knew his hitting zones. You could see while he was standing there very coolly, working out his options. And he knew this was one of them. If the ball was up, that was his number one choice. And that's where it went. There's a few captains out there at the moment too. Roger Tews waving his arms. Captain. Now the final leg's coming up. I think that's probably right for Warren. The man going out to the square leg fence. And he probably needs one out at long on as well. So Warren on strike. Four balls remaining, two runs of victory. Here they go, they're going to get themselves some... What are they doing here? They're bringing O'Connor from fine leg, bringing him inside the circle, and putting a better mover, McMillan, just inside the circle with fine leg to try and cut off a single. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight inside the circle. So what will Warren do? He'll probably try and hit it straight down the ground. Who's the man coming in? Is it Andy Bickledale or is it Ed McGrath? Well, it's not McGrath, that's for sure. And has he done a good job? That's not very good batting, I have to say. Shane Warren, you're a very, very, very good bowler, but that's not a great shot. That's a dirty slog over mid-wicket, an attempted one that didn't come off. So Warren goes at seven for 259. Well, the next one has to be a dot ball. They cannot give the strike to Bevan. There's three balls to go, two runs to win, and it's Andy Bickle, who bowled pretty well, picked up two for about 52. And a tough time, he comes now, the crowd is standing. They gave Mark War a standing ovation. They're standing now, they're all so tense. And Andy Bickle, average of nine, doesn't mean anything. He's just got to put bat on ball, scurry through and give Bevan the strike. But can he do it? Well, he can do it. And uh, Michael Bevan's telling him that right now. You can do it, son. Don't leave it up to me if you feel it's there to hit. Because they're not going to try and let me get on strike. They're going to keep you there. They're going to make you be the man. You have just came Shane Warne for having a dob. It's pretty hard for Andy Bickle. He's got to you know, play sensibly, doesn't he? Well, I think Shane Warne's a better player than that, though. That's what I'm saying. He can play cricket shots, and that was not one. The crowd are not sure what it was, are they? They're sitting on the edge of their seats. They've enjoyed every minute of it. 30,049 people have had a great day, regardless of the result. One, three, wicket for Gavin Larson. Andy Bickle, they're all up inside the circle, so they're inviting him to go over the top. Oh, the captain's come over again. Oh, it's too much. He's come over, now he wants to make another change. What's he saying? I reckon a run out's even money here. If they can get him quick enough, probably there'll be a bat pad or something. They'll scurry through. So surely one of those men on the offside have to come closer towards the pitch. They're in the ring there, about 25 to 30 metres. They all run in as one. Pickle on strike. He's got it away. It's four runs. Well played, Andy Pickle. There was a bit of width. He just nudged it past the broken sit cordon. A very good victory, a wonderful cricket match. Fantastic match. Australia win the game, and they do it uh, in the end by three wickets. But uh, full credit to the New Zealand side as well, because they've pushed this Australian side in this match to the brink. It's a fantastic result for the 30-odd thousand people that are here, and for the others watching around Australia as well. There'll be some disappointed fans in New Zealand heading off to sleep now, but they can rest assured that uh, their side's done a good job and pushing Australia right to the limit here. So Australia the winner, and the lights at Adelaide are also the winner, Bill. Yes, yeah, so what a shot from Andy Bickle. He walks out, and you see his partners fall towards the end. Bickle come out, and he played a lovely little weight cut. Arson just gave him some width, and it raced away for four. The end of a wonderful cricket match. 261 was the target. The Australians did it well.
They take the two points, and it's two points each after three games. Of course, Tuesday we go to the great MCG, and we'd expect 75,000 people at that match. Thanks for the invite, Villa. I'll be there, that's for sure. It's uh, going to be a special occasion. South Africa are already there waiting. And, uh, of course, Australia will be looking to repay the compliment that uh, South Africa gave them at the SCG the other night. New Zealand may head off to Hobart, but they shouldn't help head off downcast. They've participated well in this whole weekend of cricket. There's no doubt as we see this final shot that cricket has been a winner here in Adelaide today. Beautifully played, weight cut by Big Lee. Enjoyed it too. Fair enough, the winning run just off the first delivery we see from Larson. So in the end, a good win to Australia, but they worked hard in the end. And full credit for New Zealand as well. Take a short break and come back here with Richie Benno.